living. The following is a live presentation of CBC Sports. It is Canadian Curling's Holy Grail. The first champion came from Nova Scotia nearly 70 years ago. The latest to win the briar from British Columbia. All Canadians may aspire to pursue this curling championship. The best hail from all walks of life. They share a common focus, a common goal, and represent the everyday man. From fire halls, to beer stores and to the great outdoors the curler's dream of winning the briar lives on no province has produced more champions than manitoba especially the clubs in the winnipeg region 23 times manitobans have ruled men's curling including kerry burtnick barely out of juniors the burtnick rink came to halifax 14 years ago with an average age of 22, the young Manitoba rink came from behind with three in the final end to defeat Al Hackner's Northern Ontario rink. Sweet memories of Halifax. For his third trip to the Briar, Burtnick put together an experienced rink at the Assiniboine Club. Yesterday, they faced Alberta's Kevin Martin, the only rink to defeat them in round-robin play. Up by one early, Burtnick was looking at a house full of Alberta stone. This brilliant straight back raise took them out of a world of trouble and led to a steal of one, setting the tone for the rest of the match. Burtnick advanced to the final as the dream of a Manitoba curling sweep continued. It began in Regina with Kelly McKenzie taking the junior women's title followed by Chris Galbraith, a young farmer from Manitoba. Then Connie Laliberty captured her third Scott two weeks ago, and when she wins, so do the Manitoba men. For Burtnick, who's made a habit of reaching the briar every seven years, hopes are high his Halifax magic is intact. Next door province, Saskatchewan, hasn't won a briar since 1980. But Brad Heights Forsum came to Halifax with a quiet confidence. They finished second in the round robin, facing Manitoba Friday. Burtnick and Jeff Ryan could only watch as Brad Heights, the burly cattle and grain farmer, coolly drew to the forefoot for the extra end winner. It was glory for the Saskatchewan upstarts and advancement to the final while Burtnick was forced to play again. So Heights Gang was able to enjoy a day off to get ready for the championship showdown. We basically play just the uh, situation. We don't really think about playing uh, you know, any particular team anyway. We go out and uh, you know, just like to Maybe the first end, we like to keep it, uh, you know, fairly close to the vest. But, but after that, we, uh, you know, no problem with gambling or, uh, or playing it clean. Just whatever the, the situation really warrants. I don't think we really have one particular style or strategy that we ever use. They intend to end Saskatchewan's briar drought today. championship, the Labatt Briar. Today's championship game features Manitoba's Kerry Burtnick up against Brad Height of Saskatchewan. We're live from the Halifax Metro Centre where everyone's come to see who'll be crowned the Briar King. Please join me in welcoming 
Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us here on CBC today for the Labatt Briar final. You can hear the swirl of the bagpipes now, and you know what that means. It's time to get ready to curl. I want to tell you first a little bit about the weather here in Nova Scotia because it plays a big factor in ice conditions. On Thursday, when the temperature was 13 and humidity 95%, it caused a big frost buildup and very heavy ice conditions. But today, it's nice and cold, minus 4, humidity 32%, and the ice is going to be fabulous. There go the bagpipes right now, though. We're going to go upstairs to Canada's very best play-by-play -play announcer, Don Whitman, and three-time Briar champ, two-time world champ, and also a member of Canada's Sports Hall of Fame, Don Dugan. Thank you, Colleen. Hi, everybody. Don, Manitoba curlers may be thinking sweep, but in Saskatchewan, they're pretty confident that Brad Height can provide that province with its eighth Briar title. Well, they're kind of a team that comes in here very quietly, but they're a team that gets in your face very early. If they're down in the game, Don, they can play the finesse game. If they're up, they'll play the running game. They're a very difficult team to play against, and Kerry Burton's going to have all he can handle. After a bit of a slow start, Saskatchewan played very well towards the end of the week against the big names here at this year's Briar. And then in the playoff between one and two, they jumped into an early lead and were ahead 5-2 against Kerry Burton. Well, that's right. Kerry uh, missed a couple of shots early in the game, and Brad Height uh, maybe played a little too conservative, as he does has a tendency to do. But it should be a great game. If whoever gets down, it's going to be a lot of rocks and play. Manitoba won in round-robin action. Saskatchewan won the playoff game. So this is the rubber match for the 1995 Canadian Men's Curling Championship. Colleen? Thanks, guys. And I just got off the telephone to Kerr Roberts, Saskatchewan. I was phoning Brad Heights house. There's a big party there. There's another big party at the Kerr Robert Curling Club. Population 1,100. And, of course, they're all hoping the Kerr Robert Curlers can end Saskatchewan's 15-year drought at the Labatt Briar. But Manitoba stands in their way. We'll be back with the opening rock of the 1995 Labatt Briar final here on CBC Next. So I'm channel surfing, when it occurs to me, I wouldn't mind hitting one of those fashion TV shows in Paris. You know, I'd find out what's in, find out what's out. That'd be cool. And who knows, maybe someone over there would appreciate the enduring qualities of a true Canadian lager. Hey, trendy colors come and go. Blue never goes out of style. Ford Windstar because we were expecting a third child. He fit in actually really well. The kids have gone crazy over him. We wanted a safe vehicle with a very smooth and quiet ride. We like to do a lot of family things together. Now we have our Windstar to do it in. <laughs> Some things you can't put a price on. Fortunately, safety isn't one of them. Hi, roadside assistance. Can tell Amigo for $19.95 a month with no setup fees and no long-term commitment. Because if you had to put a price on safety, this is it. Can tell Amigo. I saw a vision of what this house could be for us. He took it all the way down to the plaster. This is our first house. In the other houses, they're off as much as two inches. These ones are perfectly true. He took everything out. I felt like I own something. I own, own a piece of the earth. CIBC Personal Vision Home Ownership. To see better ways to borrow for home renovation, see your CIBC personal banker or call. I see our home as, as sort of our nest. At CIBC, <laughs> we're working to see what you see. Can't wait to get home. Rachel's return is marred by tragedy. This is Lynn. She wants to be with us. That's why she came home. I'm afraid Rachel suffered another very severe stroke. We'll take good care of you. Road to Avonlea, tonight at 7. Tonight, from here in England, led by world champion Elvis Stoiko, it's the Parade of Champions at the World Figure Skating Championships. Join us for prime time exclusive coverage right here on CBC. Bat Briar on CBC. 
brought to you by Labatt, Good Things Brewing. Board of Canada. CIBC Insurance. And by Unitel, quality long distance for less. Welcome back to the home of the champions, CBC Sports, for our Labatt Briar Championship game between Manitoba's Terry Burtnick and Saskatchewan's Brad Height. Change in the rules this year regarding time clocks. Each team now has 70 minutes each aside to complete the game. They also get two one-minute timeouts. And, of course, if you don't complete the game in the allotted time, it's a big penalty. You lose the game, something we've never seen before, but I guess it could happen now. We're ready for the opening rock. Here's Don and Don. 70 minutes allotted to each side, and neither Brad Hyde or Kerry Burtnick has had a problem with the time clock during the course of the week. And as the game progresses, you will see players on both sides taking a glance at that clock. If they get into a situation early, as we saw yesterday in the semifinal, Kevin Martin, in a debate over what shot to play, did call a timeout in the second inning. Most times, curlers will reserve that timeout until later in the game. The opening stone of this championship battle delivered by Just out. Just Saskatchewan of lead Dan Ormsby. Gotta go then. Good call. Can't get over watching the Saskatchewan team during practice, how loose they were. Very relaxed. They played so well in their semifinal victory over Manitoba and came into this game with a lot of confidence. Keith Fenton, the lead for Manitoba. Going after the Saskatchewan Stone in the ring. Of course, the Chris Rock was in front of the ring, so he couldn't play the takeout on it because of the free guard zone, but it looked like Keith flared this out a bit, or that, that spot that we saw yesterday. You get a little bit outside the room, it will float away from the intended target. It is ice you can't be wide on. Well, in talking to Kerry Burtnick, he said he certainly doesn't want to get into the same predicament he faced yesterday where he was looking at three Alberta Stones when he had to draw the forefoot with his final rock at the first end, nor when he had to play that brilliant 12-foot raise against three Alberta Stones in the second. At no time in the game do you want to play a 12-foot raise. Gotta go. You'd like to have nice hits and rolls or free draws or just drawing for two. But no way do you want to play long raises. They speculated after that's a one in ten shot. Shot. And this is a good shot by Fenton because he's covered the outturn side. I'm sorry. By Ormsby. Uh, he's covered the outturn side where it, the rock does a little bit of curling. With the intern where Kerry Burtnick's holding the broom for Keith Fenton, this rock will float away, so he has to be very careful. Yeah, got easy. This time, Benton looks as though he'll catch a corner, but he won't catch enough of it to take it out of the ring. Again, that stone seemed to hang as it came to the hog line. Well, that's, uh, Kerry may forget about that particular uh, turn throughout the whole game, Don, unless he's really forced to, because it is very, very tricky there. Any outward motion by the printing rock, It'll float on you. Saskatchewan second, Wayne Charters, who is a uh, grain and cattle farmer outside of Robert. Right in. He played with Brad Height in 1982 when they went five and six at the Briar and Brandon. He was also the all-star second at this year's Briar. Uh, he's Wayne. He got it over the center line for a curl. And you heard Brad Height saying he got it a little bit outside and it hung straight, not where it curls. The closer you get to the center line, the more it'll curl with the outturn. Um, a little bit of a chance here for Kerry Burton have gone because he hit that rock and rolls to the inside. Now he's behind cover. Stay close, yeah! Because he finished the top of the round robin standing, Burtnick has the advantage of last rock in this championship game. Will they get an inside roll? Too much. Not a bad spot to roll to. That, that's the tricky side. And a bigger chance of rolling out here for Saskatchewan and maybe Terry uh, will be able to get rid of some of those front rocks. 
the rock is at the back of the house. It, it was at the front of the house, and you hit it going across the face, playing the intern. It may stick in the rings. When Mark Dacey was recruited to play third stone for this Saskatchewan quartet, Wayne Charters, who was third for Brad Height in the 1982 Briar, agreed to drop down to second row. And he makes his second shot of this opening end. Well, that's why he was all-star second. That's a great shot, Don. He actually got an inward roll on a very difficult turn. A lot of hand signals used by Burtnick and his Manitoba champions. Not a lot of conversation on the ice during the course of the game as Burtnick signals to second Rob Meekin the shot he wants him to play. on the running rock. Stayed there, but in good position. They can maybe promote that later on in the end. And of course, Brad Height knows that, and he'll um, he'll remove that rock because it's too close to the rings. Okay. And you know, we saw a lot of that this week. Rather than drawing around guards, like it's very difficult sometimes to draw in towards the center, the way they generate offense is putting rocks out in front and just pushing them up into the rings or promoting them. Dacey at third stone for Saskatchewan takes the Manitoba Rock out of play. Dacey was recruited by Brad Height. An interesting situation. Dacey, who skipped his own rink in two Saskatchewan finals, was a little distraught at losing the 1994 championship and was thinking about calling it quits. Brad Height was combining. As a matter of fact, he said he was in his tractor combining a field of peas when he picked up his cell phone and contacted Dacey and said, would you consider coming out of retirement to play third for me? Oh. About three days later, oh. they had agreed, and here they oh. are playing in the Briar Finals. Ah. Ah. Right. Hey, Ryan. <laughs> Jeff Ryan removes the Saskatchewan Rock. Saskatchewan still lies one. Well, Kerry Burtnick was hoping that Jeff maybe hit that one and made the double. A lot of people think, well, why wouldn't he hit the rock in the ring? That is potentially a very dangerous rock if he doesn't hit it because Saskatchewan would promote it right into the four-foot area. He was hoping to hit it at a little bit of an angle, coming across the face, make the double, and maybe roll close to the ring. But now is a good opportunity here for Saskatchewan to go around the center guard. They were saying they were kind of relieved to come in almost as a dark horse to this right great briar field. Everybody was paying attention to the Pope, Hackner, Wernick, and Burtnick, and Martins of the field. Yes, this was a very talented field. Not a bad player at third stone for uh, BC either. Pat Ryan, a two-time briar champion as a skip. And Jeff Ryan the is way. the younger brother of Pat Ryan. And your chair. And a good player. Hurry. And I think that's Smile. part of the reason that Kerry Burton got here this year is because Hurry. he recruited Hurry. Jeff. He's just an excellent shot. He has been for years in Manitoba. Okay. Right. He just got that red rock to the edge of the 12. Saskatchewan still lies one. Maybe up on the wall there. One or two. Quiet, isn't it? course of round robin played on i think brad height made some of the more spectacular shots well yes he does you know like he the thing i really like about brad height on is like he can really play a, a big up weight takeout with one shot and then finesse it with the next and that's a sign of a good curve oh, stays there a little now get out too much farther it stays there here, just going over in his own mind what he has to do here. He doesn't want to flare it out. It'll stay right out there. If he hooks it inside, Real. it makes curl too much on it. Just playing Real. a great back raise on this one, but he's got lots of ways. Well, oh, he wants to make sure this is in here. He bumps it up against the Manitoba stone. And raise it in for shots at the top of the eighth. 
Well, a pretty good shot by Brad Height on it. He rolled a little bit into the open, and Curry's going to have to be very careful with this one because it's partially hidden behind that center guard. If Curry hits this on the nose, unfortunately, he will not be shot. He has to get some kind of movement, and I don't know whether he can roll far enough to become shot rock. We should say hello right now to uh, Carrie's sister, Kim, down in Owensburg, Kentucky. A group of curling fans down there uh, going to a great deal of trouble to locate a satellite dish so they could watch today's telecast from Halifax. Yeah, hard! Three! Hard! Three! Come on, all the way! Hard! Whoa, 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 whoa! But Saskatchewan still has the shot stone at the back of the house. Well, for Brad Hyde gone, he'd like to come down here and he'd hit that rock and stay right on the nose there. And what do you want? Why the reason he wants to stay there is he like he blocks off the complete forefoot for Kerry Burtnick if he was trying to draw. He may even like a little bit of an inside roll and really force the draw. You always like getting off to a good start in the very first end, and this has been a good end for Saskatchewan. Yep! Hooray! Hard! Hooray! Hard! Hooray! 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 Right up! Right up! Oh. Whoa, baby. Whoa, baby is right. Because if that rolls out, Kerry's got a hit for two. The stone just delivered by Brad Height. Hangs good. in the 12. And once it's true. And not totally unlike yesterday's semifinal game, Kerry Burtnick will have to make a key draw with his final stone of this first end. He's only looking at two Saskatchewan rocks, unlike yesterday's game against Alberta, where he is facing three stones. Well, there's been a lot of rocks played down in this area, Don, so it's fairly keen. But if he doesn't want to get outside that blue line, which is right the side of the forefront, it may be a little bit stickier out there for him. So he'll let it go. His judges, his brushers will make a decision then as to how fast he's let it go, whether to brush it or not to brush it. Easy. You heard him say easy right away, which means he, thinks he has enough weight. Wait a Exactly what he did yesterday in the first end against Kevin Martin of Alberta en route to a 9-3 semifinal win here in this championship game. Manitoba draws first blood against Saskatchewan. It doesn't take a thief long to steal a car. Police reports show that on average one car is stolen every 20 seconds. It's time to get serious about crime prevention. It's time for the club. The club is a state-of-the-art tempered steel locking device that's tough to defeat. Once attached to your vehicle, thieves see it and move on, leaving your car or truck right where you parked it. Except no cheap imitations, make sure your anti-theft device says the club on the handle. Never park your car without it. Kerry Burtnick's come a long way since his first Briar win 14 years ago. Now he's put together another strong contender. But Lee, there's Keith Fenton. Uh, he's our left-hander on the team and uh, confuses the team, other teams a little bit. Uh, now Keith is uh, quite a quiet individual, but he's also a very intense competitor. And uh, he's, he's really a great supporter for all the rest of the guys on the team. Like any time we've struggled or things are down a little bit, Keith's always the first one to pipe up and give you a pat on the back and, and, and you know, say, let's just keep it together and that type of thing. And I think that's one of the strongest uh, strengths that Keith has. And at second, uh, Rob Meekin is a very consistent curler. Uh, Rob's had some good success in the mixed curling, so he does have some experience, even though he hasn't been to the bar. He's also a, a very good friend of mine, so I, I think that uh, we can draw on that a little bit from each other to, to help pull together when we really need to. And then uh, Jeff at third. Well, Jeff, of course, has had an extremely successful career in his own right, even though his brother has probably overshadowed him. But uh, Jeff and I curled together for four years in the 80s and, and uh, we did extremely well together. 
on the bond steel circuit. And, and the main reason was because Jeff was such a consistent curler. And I was really happy to get the chance to get him back to, to play third for me because, uh, the, you know, the only way you can win at something like this is you have to have the best guys. And, and certainly he's uh, extremely strong and it makes my job a lot easier. Also making life easier is Burtnick's sense of team play, letting each member do his job instead of leaving everything up to the skip. I think my strength is consistency. Um, I don't think that I'll necessarily be the guy that makes the most shots out there, but I think that I'll make an, an average num or above average amount of shots on a more consistent basis maybe than some other guys. And, and that's what I always strive for is not necessarily to try and be 90 or 95 percent, but if I can be somewhere around 80 percent most of the time, then I think that's going to help our team through a lot of situations. Harry Burtnick talked about the lead on the Manitoba rink. Keith Fenton as the guy who confuses them all the time because he's a left-hander. As a matter of fact, Fenton is the only left-hander that participated in this year's Briar, unlike some other years where we have had a number of left-handed curlers. That is unusual, only one. But he's a competitor. Of course, from the Assiniboine Memorial, a lot of good teams out of there, and I know they're all watching today. I think uh, little Kevin and Ted has got them all organized there, and they're all around the screen watching. He phoned me last night at about midnight. Said, Donnie, we're going to be at the Assiniboine. Correct. I don't think we're going to be anywhere else. So. Ditto for the folks in Kerr Roberts. Yes. The population of just over 1,100. Most of them are at the Curling Club or Brad Heights House, where he's got the big screen, they say. Yeah, he's coming home with another big screen as the result of his second place finish in the hot shot competition prior to the briar. Ed Wernick oh. was the winner of the Ford Contour, a $19,500 automobile in the hot shot event. And Brad Height finished in the runner-up position and won a 32-inch Sony Trinitron. That's good. Good boy, Dan. Shot, Dan. And there's going to be some offense generated in this end. Two rocks, both in play. Kerry dropped the first one out in front of two feet. Brad Height threw up the corner guard, and Kerry's going to go around the center guard. And that's where he wants to steal the points. That's where he wants to generate his offense in the fourth area. And, of course, any rocks in that three-guard zone area from the house to the hog line cannot be taken out for the first three rocks. Both of these teams like to play an aggressive game. Oh, that's a beautiful shot. That's a sign of a good lead when you put the front one up and then put the other one behind. That's just great curling. Fenton did something similar on ends 9 and 10 in the loss to Saskatchewan in the playoff game. They were trailing 5-2. And with his second stone on both the ninth and the 10th end, he buried it in the forefoot behind cover. And that enabled Manitoba to force the extra grand with Saskatchewan eventually winning. Well, you know, in this type of game, the lead usually generates how the end is going to play, whether he puts the first one in the right spot and then goes around with the second one. Because the other team can't hit it, he's got to make sure that second one is partially buried or fully buried. And that dictates how the whole end will be played. Now Ken, now uh, Terry's lying too. He's going to put up the guard, and uh, it's going to be life and death for Saskatchewan to get out of this end. He's going to need a run back or a double kill somehow to get his offense started this end. 30-year-old Rob Macon, sales manager with Pro Components in Winnipeg. Oh, A former Canadian mix champion with Jeff Stout back in 1988. Strike Carey was the only member of the uh, rink in 1981 that won the Briar. We had three fresh faces for him. So now, while the lead is generated the offense on this particular end by Beacon just coming in a little bit too tight, Don. He's really kind of spoiled this for, for Manitoba because if Saskatchewan makes the double and gets a little bit of an inside roll, Kerry's got to play the rock. Even if he hits the sits right there, he'll make the double. He'll be very close to the ring, and I think Kerry will have to hit the rock. It's a game of opportunities, and you've got to cash in when you get your big break. This might be the one Saskatchewan needed to get out of this end. Carters will only get one, but the shooter rolls in to become second shot. 
And a little bit of a break for Saskatchewan there, Don, because he come off his own on the right-hand side there and ended up second shot. Rock and Carey cannot ignore it. So now for the whole end, there will be no more guards played because I'm sure if Manitoba hits this on the nose, Saskatchewan will try and hit the shot rock and move it around somewhere. Great shot making will uh, score you a couple points in an end. Adam the elemental luck does come in to play every once in a while. Strung out from the 12 foot through the 4 to the 12. Three red handled Manitoba stones. Manitoba lies three. And for those people who may just be joining us, I'm Don Whitman along with Don Duguid and Colleen Jones speaking to you from the Metro Center in Halifax and this championship game yeah, of the 1995 oh, oh, oh. Labatt Briar Final. No, no. A very good crowd in attendance today. Percy Fleet, the general chairman, has to be very pleased with the number of spectators who are here. They were up over 110,000 coming into today's championship game and while they won't threaten the record that was set in Saskatoon at 151,000 this will be among the uh, top half dozen crowds for a Briar week certainly those attendance figures are very rewarding for the hundreds of volunteers who put in hundreds of hours to put in this to put on this Briar well you know it was a great field and uh, Anybody who didn't come and watch the curling missed a great week because there's some outstanding shot making and the greatest players in the world were here this week. Hurry, a little more. Hurry. And now we're down to just two. And Jeff Ryan has Manitoba again lying three as he draws the four foot. A lot of pressure on Saskatchewan put on by Manitoba this end. They always had a couple in the ring. That height is switched to the intern for Mark Dacey, whereas before he was hockey wing charters to play the outside. Oh, and a little thicker. He had a beauty right behind that corner guard. Shot delivered by Dacey, rolls out. Dacey is an assistant golf pro at the Moon Lake of course, southwest of Saskatoon, and last year he achieved another dream as he was a member of the Saskatchewan Willingdon Cup team. Three more. But his big dream is to win the Briar. Oh, Every curler's dream in Canada ah. one day win ah. the Canadian Curling Championship and go on to the world. Never. Oh. Oh. It shows you what kind of athlete Stacy is, though, to be able to Hang dominate. Around in two sports in his province. Ryan draws to the back of the eight foot. Three stones well spread. Manitoba lies three, but Saskatchewan has last rock advantage. It's an interesting call. He's uh, calling for Mark Dacey to play a wide outturn hit on a rock, and he's what he's trying to do is hit and roll behind his own cover there on the outside. It's a really difficult shot. He might want to have chose maybe to freeze down to the one that yep, Jeff oh. Ryan just threw. But oh. All right. well. He's trying to generate some yeah. offense with a little bit of a roll oh. here. Yeah. Well, the one yeah. thing the Saskatchewan yeah. team has done so well throughout oh. the week has come up oh. with some major oh. hit and roll. Oh. There's another. Oh, that's a great shot. Let me tell you, that is a fantastic curling shot. Because he rolled to the absolute perfect curling spot. Right in behind the back. Oh, he's left. What? He's left. An inch less roll he wants. 93 feet away. He's looking for a one inch roll. More or less. Look at that. Perfect. Dead behind. Not well, good. Kerry Burtnick's intern attempt curled enough to come down to that stone. Well, we saw a lot of movement in that area in yesterday's game. It will move big time at the end. The key is his weight. He must let it go. Enough for back ring. Let his sweepers brush it to hold it for a while and then hope that it breaks at the end and comes around the guard. Still, this is an area the ice carry hasn't looked at because Saskatchewan was able to hit the roll there. Burtnick making an educated yeah. guess Hurry, at what it will hard. do. Couldn't get it past the stone out front. 
how quickly the momentum of an end can change. It was looking so good for Manitoba, and now the advantage could be to Saskatchewan. And you heard Kerry say to yeah, Rob Meekin and Keith Benson, was I a little light? Uh, yeah, maybe, uh, yeah, maybe a little quiet. Obviously wanted to play a little bit more weight. A little bit more weight would have pulled him by that guard. It's hard to know because there's never been a rock thrown down there. Yeah, it shouldn't have been off too much early. We know it goes. No, I don't. Can't That's one him. thing the sweepers have to do. They have to stay with stones from the moment the fire releases it. Well, when he releases it, Don, you sweep it. The same way to threw then maybe in the last time. To keep it straight. And then about halfway down, the holder of the broom will decide what kind of a line he's got. Then you sweep it again, maybe to keep it hold straight again. Yep. Lift your brooms and open that old girl. Saskatchewan brushes now are just for weight. They're not so concerned Fire. about line, just for weight. Although they've got Fire. a rock at the back to come to. Whoa, clean. Okay, just a weight. Whoa. Just clean. Just clean down. That's good. That's good. Hey boy. Oh, great shot. Saskatchewan rise too. Thanks. Terry Burton is going to try to hit this rock, and he's trying to move it over in this area here, hoping maybe that Saskatchewan will drive it back on their own at the back. He doesn't think he can make the double, if, unless he hits it really, really thin, but he's just trying to move his shooter over into an area in front of that other Saskatchewan rock. But the only danger of uh, height playing down to that red Manitoba rock was that he leaves himself open to a possible jam on his last one. You're at all outside of the broom here. It just isn't going to come. Yeah. And that stone stayed straight. Saskatchewan still has the shot rock, but now a chance to draw for two with last rock of this second end for Brad Height of Corrupt. who may not be familiar with the province of Saskatchewan. Corroborate is located about 115 miles west of Saskatoon. And these four gentlemen curl out of the Robert Curling Club, a four-sheet rink in their uh, community of about 2,000 people. Awesome. Right off, guys. Right off. Not lay much brush to this. Let her die. Same right shot that uh, Brad Height threw with his first one. He doesn't no, want right to be heavy. No. But it looks like he's starting to dig in oh, now. Is he going to stop in time? Yes, he is. Shot. So with the final stone of M2, Brad Height takes advantage of last rock. And after two ends of play, Saskatchewan leads Manitoba in this championship game by a point. with Russ Howard. We've got a really interesting situation here. We're tied coming home. There's only three rocks to play. Red has hammer, and it's red shot. Normally, you would try to remove the front and make it easy for the last stone. But in this situation, yellow's got one locked in there. You're not going to remove all three guards, so it's time to make your shot now. Throw the red one in here. Get a nice tight freeze. Maybe move the yellow back a bit. Get it tight to the guard. You probably won't have to throw your last one. In today's curling, you can't just have one strategy. With the free guard zone, changing from defense to offense has to be done in a big hurry. Be flexible. Remember, when you get the chance, put the pressure back on the opposition. Force them to make a better shot. Great shot, Russ. For four hot shots, I'm Russ Howard. We've made history on Canadian roads for years. Now we're looking to the future. Introducing the new Ford Explorer. The only leading sport utility with standard dual airbags. The one with the roomiest interior. The only one with control track, which provides four-wheel drive traction automatically. The new Ford Explorer. Far and away the best the world has to offer. Now, from the Purex P. 
pillow people at Scott Paper. New noticeably softer Purex bathroom tissue. You will see and feel the difference in every two-ply sheet. It's so much softer, so much smoother. Pillowy soft, regular. And jumbo Purex. Now noticeably softer. As the thermometer drops, dangerous crystals can form in your car's engine, threatening to shorten its life. That's why today's Quaker State has engineered intelligent oil. Oil that senses the changing threats in your engine and adapts its own molecular structure for continuous protection. Whenever the driving conditions change, so does Quaker State. The intelligent oil for longer engine life. Welcome back to the Metro Center in Halifax as we get set for N3 of this Labatt Briar final with Saskatchewan leading 2-1. Tonight on CBC Television, a three-hour figure skating special. It's the Parade of Champions from the World Figure Skating Championship in Birmingham, England. You'll see the stars, including gold medalist Delva Stoiko of Canada and China's Liu Chen. That's tonight on CBC Television. And there's an interesting tie-in with the Metro Center and the World Figure Skating Championships. Elvis Stoiko competing in the Canadian Championships here, injured his ankle, fell into the boards back in January, and there was a great deal of concern as to whether or not he would be able to participate in the World Championships. Not only did he participate, he won the gold medal. There sure was concern, but back here at the Metro Center in January for the Canadian Figure Skating Championships, when he went out to skate his short program, he couldn't complete it because of the injury to the ankle. Oh, was so serious. We heard the Saskatchewan oh, team yeah, nice talking during the commercial break that the ice is a lot faster than it has been all week. They think it's about 23 and a half seconds, maybe even 24 for draw weight. That's fast. That's the fastest it's been all week. Well, that's what Brad Height was saying to Kerry Burtnick, and he was asking the Manitoba skip if it was as fast yesterday. Well, it wasn't quite as slick yesterday as it is today. And that's the type of ice curlers like I have always liked curling on 23, 24 second ice. Nice, smooth delivery, nice releases. Rushers can do a lot with fast ice. They can take it 12, 15 feet further if they really bear down on it. You know, pull around corner guards very tightly. So it's good ice for curlers. Well, during the hot shots competition uh, that we were talking about earlier, the one where Nick won the car and Height won the big television set, the ice was so heavy that Height actually suffered an injury to his hamstring. Much like Elvis Stoichel. <laughs> I think Stoichel was a little more serious. Hurry, <laughs> quick, hard, run up. Hard, break the finish. Come on, guys, every in. Okay, yeah. And by putting it out in front, covering the one in the forefoot, they're trying to take away the offense from the Manitoba team. Kerry threw up a corner guard, and he's saying, okay, you throw up a corner guard, I'm going to play a guard on my own and generate some offense this way. And, and really what they're trying to do is steal a point here, and or if they can, you know, maybe force Manitoba to take a point here, and then they got control playing the even end. This whole game is about control. You like to get four and five up. That shouldn't happen in championship games. Really trying for control here. Look at this beautiful shot. Keith Fenton removes the Saskatchewan stone. Manitoba lies one. That was a great shot because it takes away that center guard. Now if Saskatchewan rolls out, Manitoba may have a chance to go around the corner guard. Conversely, of course, Saskatchewan wants to generate offense again. They want to get a hit and a roll behind that center guard again. Talking to Wayne Charters, we were asking about no. oh. other members of his family being in attendance, and he said his father, Keith, really no. wanted to be no. here. He no. said, but it's calving season. No. Okay. And oh, he said, I haven't Pardon. talked to him for a day no, now, but roll. as of yesterday, <laughs> while I've been away, 30 calves have been born. <laughs> So while Wayne is curling, Father Keith is uh, 
looking after the business end of things back in Toronto. <coughs> Ditto for Brad's father as well, because they have about 100 head of cattle as well, so he stayed home. Yeah, and that Don Duguid wanted to know what the names of the cattle were. <laughs> he wanted names for all of them. What did you call them? <laughs> yeah. They're yeah. Yeah. So they start out in the alphabet. Wow. A, B, C, D, wow. depending on what year they're born. But I didn't know that. as far as Burtnick was hoping for from Rob Meekin, but it is still partially covered. Manitoba has shot Rob. Just enough of a roll so that Chargers, who's throwing this rock, has to be very careful how he releases this one. If he gives it a little bit of inward motion, the rock is liable to curl more for him. He's liable to wreck on the guard. If he flares it out to the broom or forces it out to the broom, it may flare on him and he'll go by on the high side. to the open side, Saskatchewan lies one. Well, that's two great oh. shots. Just excellent curling. Very precision-like. You know, they're moving the rock back and forth, back and forth across the sheet. That tells you these guys know the ice, know exactly what kind of weight to throw to make the shots. You can see where Kerry puts the ice for that broom on the inside edge, wow. negative ice. Yeah. Right off. He knows it'll drop off there. Rob Macon has the nose hit. And Manitoba now has the shot stone. You know, we talked about the number of volunteers oh, that are involved yeah. in staging a briar. People to sell tickets, people to look after the curler's needs, people to drive the curlers around. The driver for the Saskatchewan team is Peter Corkin. You're familiar with him, Colleen? He would be my coach, and I think UB's played against him, too, in the senior championship. So they're in good hands. Also, uh, my third, Kay Zink, has been handling the physio for Brad Heights. So uh, he's an excellent hand. Fine shot by Mark Dacey as he Bump rolls away. to the right. forefoot behind cover. That's two good rolls, Mark Dacey. He's got the last one and the uh, second and was a lot better than this one because he kind of rolled into the open, but... All week long, he's been doing that. He's made some great hips and rolls behind cover. And you know, that really generates a lot of offense. It puts a lot of pressure on the other team. Hurry! 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 Whoa, 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 whoa. Jeff Ryan just catches a piece of the stone that was sitting out front guarding, and not only does he catch a corner of it, he nudges it in for a second shot. Well, so yes, close yes. yet so far, you know, and that's the danger of playing tight trying to come around guards. If you just touch the guard, you roll him into the rings, and that's what exactly what happened to Jeff Ryan. Really a bad break, but now for Brad Height, of course, he'll ask Mark Dacey to put a rock out in front. I would say about two or three feet in front of the ring. Tons of room. Tons of room. What's that? You on the blue line going down. The sheets are down. It's not making much of a move at all. Now they're trying to shoot it because they want to carry it further and hope that it curls and I cover it. Didn't curl as much as Daisy thought it would. Well, in this case, because the outturn runs very straight and even falls back with any kind of weight, they wanted to leave the corner open on the outturn side, not the intern side. Because the intern side will curl, and that's exactly what yeah. Jerry Burton is asking Relax. Jeff Ryan to do, is play the intern. Watch it. Whoa, Whoa. Right Whoa. 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 Now watch it. It'll, it. It'll come to big Whoa. time at the end. Whoa. 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 Nice rock. Well, that's a beautiful rock. You know, he wouldn't have had make that shot if he had to play the outro. The intern it just walks right over there at the end, and that's a great shot by Jeff Ryan. Really gets his team out of here. Tough jackpot here. Go where? Yeah. I play ball, ball, ball in there in my chair. Now, of course, for Brad Height, Don, he has to make sure that he doesn't jam it on the back, because if he jams it on the back mount, it will be shot rock. 
He doesn't want to hit it too high and jam it on the one in the back and maybe roll the Manitoba shot over for second shot behind the corner guard. Just pick it. So he, like he said, he's just going to try and pick it out of there. It's just in a corner of it. Jam it up. Hopefully by the yellow one. This is a precision shot. We won't be hard on this yeah, one. and Manitoba has shot rock. Uh, crying out loud. Well, he got a bad break there, and he might have thrown a little bit inside because they yelled as soon as he let it go to sweep. So it okay, for Kerry Burton, Don, he's going to try and pull the rock in this area here, but hopefully get it buried. He doesn't want it in too deep. He certainly doesn't want it behind the T-line and allow Brad Height to freeze to it. A lot of people might say, well, why doesn't he draw to the open side? Because if he goes around the corner guard, doesn't get it completely buried, Height may be able to dub double him. But I think this is a great shot because there's lots of movement to this ice over in this corner. Kerry just confirming with the front end as to the pace of the ice surface. Let me tell you, half of the eight foot fully buried. He's got a lot of spread height and a lot of trouble. This really is how threes are born. Where is he? Because if he can bury it, well, he can. Well, he can. I don't well, have much of a chance. Well, he plays well by the guard. Long way to curl. By his foot. Yeah. Moved very much from. I think he maybe hit, took a little bit too much ice and it stayed barely open. We got to be awful tight to the guard to yeah. get inside. What's wrong with this? Something like that? I think Brad Heitz wants to hit and stay right there because he stays there, he's no. half behind the guard, and there's a chance maybe Kerry Burton could jam it on the one on the right-hand side belonging to him. So you don't want to roll the open, then it's just a wide open hit for two. I think you want to hit and stay right there. If you can get an inside roll, so much the better. He doesn't want to fool around this one. He doesn't want to piggy back this down. Yep. He wants to make sure yep. that he's got enough weight. Yep. certainly left no doubt that he wanted the sweepers right off that table. Oh. we got to get them guards on, fellas. You heard him say, fellas, we got to get those guards on. Well, you know, it was, I thought it was a pretty good guard by Mark, Mark Deese. He just never had to curl another oh, six inches. Guard by four inches. But Jeff Ryan made a great come around freeze, and that started the whole end. So Kerry Burtnick with the final stone of N3 is an opportunity to get the deuce back that he relinquished in the second end. This is a very straight running turn. He just wants to make sure that he has a nice release on it. Whoa. He doesn't force it out to the broom. Whoa. Whoa. Off. 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 Right off. Right off. Right off. Right off. Clean. Right off. Right you hear him say clean. clean, you know that they're right on the money. Indeed he is, as Manitoba gets two with last rock on them three. And Manitoba has regained a one-point lead. Do you dream in color? In bottomless blues and screaming yellows? In sounds that shake you to the bottom of your heart? Images clear as crystal and brilliant as ice. In faraway worlds, as close as your fingertips. These are what dreams and Sony Trinitron televisions are made of. Make one come true for you. It's your life. Isn't it worth a Sony? Raised in a proud prairie province, curling came naturally to Saskatchewan's Brad Height. 
I can remember growing up uh, you had a heck of a time getting on the ice on, on men's nights, Tuesday and Thursday. They were lined up, and uh, it just uh, was something my parents both curled. And I, I played hockey, as most people do in, in Corrobert, but uh, after a while, as hockey started to fade, I, I just got more and more into curling and, and just kept picking it up. Returning to the Briar for the first time in 13 years, Heights Rink's been overwhelmed by the enthusiastic attention they've received. You know, kind of amazing, the phone calls after we'd uh, won the province going, there's just people from every corner of the province are phoning you that you've never heard of before. And, uh, you know, all the way down here to Halifax, you look up in the crowd and there's Saskatchewan flags flying in every corner. It's, it's something that's just amazing. Everybody, everybody really gets behind you. En route to their second place finish in the round robin, the Kerr Robert Curlers have seen their support group steadily grow. Well, probably the major sea of green, the, the little clump there, that's uh, all friends and family. But uh, you look around the rink and there's, you know, four or five more little pockets of uh, people that, you know, you maybe see come up and say hi to you and good game or get them next time. But, uh, you know, you really don't know them and it's, uh, it's really nice to have. When Saskatchewan last won the Briar, they were led by Rick Folk. This week, Height knocked off the 1994 world champ, and he did the same to Al Hackner, who competed here in 81, and the veteran Ed Wernick, like Hackner, twice the world champion. Only Kerry Burtnick was able to finish ahead of Height's unheralded rink. We know personally that we can play with them, and uh, they probably know that too, but it's it's just the, uh, you know, the media hype and the stuff was on the, the big four, the big five, I guess. And uh, it's kind of a nice situation when you're not the, the favorite and, and can kind of just go out there and play. You know, it's been so long since Rick did it. And, uh, you know, I guess every place feels they have the best curlers in the country. But I know Saskatchewan really, really feels that way. And uh, it would just be, you know, it would be something really special if we could uh, end the... Uh, 15-year drought, I guess. Well, only four other curlers have ever won a briar coming out of Saskatchewan. Garnet Campbell in 1955, Bernie Richardson in 59, 60, 62, and 63, Harvey Mazinki in 1973, and the most recent Saskatchewan men's curling hero, Rick Folk, who now resides in Kelowna and represented British Columbia at this year's Briar and of course is or was the defending Canadian champion. And uh, we've seen where one shot has made a big difference in two ends in the second end. Uh, Mark Dacey made a good hit and roll and that uh, manufactured a two point uh, score for Saskatchewan. The last end a great uh, tap back by Jeff Ryan generated two points for Manitoba. So you can see how one rock very crucially played in a certain situation will really turn around for you in a curling game. First zone of the fourth end by Saskatchewan lead Dan Ormsby. Hurry, quick, come on! No, okay, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Roll it. Nice He's shot, going Dan. to rub oh, boy. the Manitoba stone out front. I said that they Stop curl out of the four sheet to Robert Curling Club. Well, Ormsby farms outside of Eston, Saskatchewan. He has to drive about 60 miles to Robert to curl. And Mark Dacey has to drive 115 miles from Saskatoon to Robert when they get together to curl. Oh, that's dedication. On a flat, straight highway. With yeah. the wind blowing and a little hey. snow once in a while. Red for line. Red for line. Well, they love the game of curling. They love to the They're very oh, successful, oh, well oh, thought of. Oh. So you pursue your oh. sport that you enjoy. Maybe slipped a little bit too far for Keith Benton. He would like that rock that much in front of the T-line. Because if you're in front of the T-line, of course, they freeze to it. You're, they're not shot rocks. But you're behind the T-line. The other team comes up to it. They are shot rocks. And that's the difference between placing the rocks in front of or behind the T-line. Nice one. Rock. Look at that rock is staying right there. Oh, starting to make a little bit of a move now. 
He's got to slip right past it, and Kerry Burtnick will take it out the back. I'm going to try that in. He's so insane. He's sleeping there. Coming into this end, Ormsby yeah, that there, that first led his that. Manitoba yeah. counterpart, Keith Fenton, in percentages. Let's play up there. Well, the cardinal sin in curling, when you have last rock, you never put it through the ring. At least get it in place somewhere so that you either got a chance to raise it or move it around or manipulate it. You can't do that when it's behind the hash. Wait, what? Take a look, guys. Will it come by? Uh, no. No, I'll just leave it then. Or that, just leave it. Right out. Right out. No, no, right out. Right out. is taking a look at the Yellowstone sitting up in front of the rink and seeing Cut. if he can use it at all. Well, what he's looking at, he's, look, he's definitely going to run the front one. But what he's afraid of, if he hits it really thin, he may... A couple inches off the nose, we might push that in. He make the double one, he may make the double, but the red one may come Small off the yellow one into the it. rings. He's also hoping if he hits it a little bit high side, he may push the yellow one into the rings with one of the red ones. That's when you hope the other guy doesn't look. You'll say, oh, yeah, it was the I was in. <laughs> he was really close to making a pistol there because he almost bounced that red one onto his yellow one and into the ring. Right. Yep. Here. Here, bump it. I don't, if you angle it, though, it's no good. Play here. You're, you're saying if you angle it, it's no good because if you angle it, you may just touch the yellow one or and roll it into the open. So that's why he's decided to come around. And this is a very aggressive move by Terry Burton. Well, that's been his trademark all week. Well, not all week. I mean, he's that type of player. He's played that way in Manitoba all. Have a look. He's very aggressive. Line's pretty good. Get ready. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And I like that quality on the curler. I really do. I'm not afraid of anything. Get ready. You can make the shot play them. Just through. Yeah, through it. Maybe to the hack. Well, the danger here for Saskatchewan, Don, is that they're playing very tight ice and very quiet weight. If the rock ever makes an inward motion and he touches the red rock belonging to Manitoba, he could move it onto the other one and leave Manitoba lying three. But of course, what he'd rather do is make that perfect hit and roll. Yes, he'd like to roll in front of the other Manitoba rock. He just rolls across the face of it, Manitoba's left line one. Well, the nice part about that is he's taken away the corner from Manitoba. Now Manitoba's going to have to hit this one. This is how the seconds compared through the first three ends. Rub this back. Play regular. Okay. You saw Kerry indicate here that he wants to hit the Saskatchewan one. Three quarters. If he comes over, he'll maybe touch his front one and squirt up in towards the ring. Like a pool shot. Oh, almost. He had, to be, he had to get that rock a little bit thinner and he would have touched that one and rolled up into the top of the forefoot. John just said, like a pool shot. I don't think it's any mere coincidence, but a lot of the better curlers are also pretty good pool players. Many yeah, of the yeah. angles and the shots right. and raises and that are much the, the same. Way. Absolutely correct. Play bumper. That's exactly what they do. Bumper. Head. And it's like a game of pool, probably. knowing which, how to hit the angles and how to Good raise bump. it in behind Head. the guard. Now the problem here for Mark Dacey, those two rocks are frozen pretty well together. No. Well, and he has to hit all Clear. three quarters of the rock and he's going to spill them both. Whoa. Whoa. I think Mike should be more concerned about uh, getting the roll inside. 
Well, even if he hits it on the nose, Colleen, it's a good shot. He'll be shot rock with a Manitoba rock behind him. Just that like that. Beauty. Yeah, that's as good as a double any day. Because your shot rock, that's a great shot by Mark J.C. That's three in a row for Mark. Super guys. Now, the trouble with Manitoba, of course, if he plays exactly the same shot, they're not shot rock. The uh, Saskatchewan rock will still be closer to the center. I like the draw. Uh, T-line weight. T-line weight. He'd like to maybe freeze three quarters on this rock. Maybe touch it back just a little bit. So that there's a little bit of separation between the Saskatchewan rock and the back Manitoba rock and then maybe play the next time. It's still hard to imagine how Manitoba can get shot without getting a bounce as well. Well, if he angles it, he's going to have a good shot. He's got shot. He's got shot, but it's fairly easy for Saskatchewan to bounce it out of there. Uh, the only trouble is if he bounces it out, they're not going to be second shot rock. And now there's separation between the second shot rock along to Saskatchewan and Manitoba. That isn't bad either. A little less right. Oh, just over center, about a half an inch. Once again, play that same or a little more? Okay, same. You stay the same. Same weight. Even that isn't terrible, but... Yeah. I said earlier that Mark Dacey uh, is giving thought to retiring after skipping his own rink twice to the Saskatchewan yep. final, losing yep. 1994 yep. to Doug Harcourt and 1992 Whoa. to Brad Hebert. So he and right Brad Hyde right consult a lot of the shots they play. Oh, what a gorgeous. That is a great curly shot, let me tell you. It looks to me like Manitoba could be shot. He couldn't kiss Yeah, he really got a bad break there, and he moved him around, but Manitoba still shot Rock at the back. Just one more way. But how do you get it out of there? Easy way. Uh, maybe let's play regular. It's so normal. Hit it an uh, inch and a half off center. the center for a little while. Manitoba, Kerry Burton's got a chance here, Don. If he hits this hot on the high side, he could come down here, make the double. This one will go this way, and this one will go this way, and he'll make a great shot, and he'll be lying, too. The danger, of course, for this shot, Don, is that if he doesn't hit it quite right, he could take out his own at the back, and then Saskatchewan have a wide-open hit yeah. for three. This is a gambling-type shot. You heard him say to third Jeff Ryan I want to hit it an inch and a half off center it's amazing they're talking about half inches you know by the time you release the rock from the hog landing oh, the oh, line is 93 feet and they're talking about a half an inch oh 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 never ah, never you're ah, saying never you a lot of weight ah. oh look at that beautiful shot absolutely great well you called it Don he made the double and Manitoba now lies too and that's how you get out of difficulty, you know? No, no question. You know what they say, that's why they got him shooting last. That's an all-Canadian curling shot. Look at here, he has to hit it absolutely perfect. They do not lay a brush to this thing all the way down the ice. And he hits it perfect. When you're hot, you're hot. Well, this is a little different game than the first and second place battle to determine which team got an automatic spot in the final. Manitoba was very tentative in the game against Saskatchewan, falling behind 5-2, and Brad Height was playing with a lot of confidence. Today, Manitoba is playing, particularly the skip Kerry Burtnick, with a lot of confidence. Well, they really are, and Kerry got down early in that game, missed a couple of shots that he normally would not miss, and that caused him a little bit of trouble. Brad Height with the take up. Saskatchewan has the shots going. I threw it out right from the go. You know, when the skip makes a shot like that, it really puts the other team on a little bit of a downer. 
I know when I'm playing and a guy makes a great shot like that, you know that he's hot and you're good. It could be a long afternoon for you. But I mean, uh, Brad Height's been through these situations many, many times and that won't bother him. Manitoba had a 10-1 record in round-robin play. Saskatchewan 8-3 and three in round-robin play. And under the new page playoff system in effect this year, Manitoba and Saskatchewan played to see which team would get a spot in the final. Saskatchewan won. The Manitoba had to play in the semifinal against the winner of the game between, between teams three and four, and that was Kevin Martin of Alberta. And Bert Mc won 9-3 yesterday. All of the curlers have voiced their displeasure about the uh, new page playoff system because they think there's not enough of an advantage for the team who wins the round robin. Precisely, and some of the curlers have suggested that the team that wins the round robin should get an automatic bye into the final and that the third and fourth place team should play off to decide which team plays the second place team in the semifinal. A great hit and roll by Kerry Burnett. The rocks are exa almost exactly the same spot, right on the tee line. Thanks for the help. So Brad Height has to throw a okay. full eight foot. Uh, it looks like a very easy shot, Don, but there's nothing particularly difficult about this shot except the circumstances. You know, you're down one point play in the fourth. You're in the Canadian final. The other team's lying two. Yep, yep. Playing up. And you just have to, you know. Playing hard. Draw on your experience well, to make sure there. that you get it there. Hope the sweepers clean. of your light off can get off it in the ring. Clean, clean, clean. Here's a good shot. Shot that out of As you said earlier, yeah. whenever the skip following the rock says clean, you know it's going to be there. And he draws to the forefoot with the final stone of the fourth end. And this championship game, Manitoba against Saskatchewan, is deadlocked. Hey, in the the you got by it or stick it hard for you. A brand new Ford Contour. That was the top prize available to this best field in Briar history as the players competed in the Ford Hot Shots, a skills competition of six different shots. Hit and stay, draw to the button, draw to the port, the raise, the hit and roll, and finally the dreaded double. And it came down to just two curlers, Saskatchewan's Brad Height, trailing Ed Wernick of Ontario by just one point. He needed to score at least two to take the lead. He'd make the hit and then roll behind the second stone and score none. Brad Height would hand the Ford Contour to Ontario's Ed Wernick. Congratulations to the Ontario skip, Ed Wernick, who picks up the keys to a brand new Ford Contour. Runners up received Sony products. Sony, the one and only. Personal computers. Everybody wants one or already has one, but how long does it take to get up and running? Too long if you're reading manuals and too expensive if you take classroom courses. Here's the perfect solution. Introducing the number one video teacher for computers. The fast, easy way to learn how to use a computer. You get a detailed introduction to the PC and professional instruction on the most popular programs like Windows 3.1 and Excel. With the number one video teacher, you'll learn the easy way. No fancy words or jargon, and you can learn at your own pace. Call now and get this valuable instructional video for this incredible low price. But that's not all. We'll also send you a second video. You'll learn MS Word for Windows, QuickBooks, and Word Perfect for Windows, too. Now the computer skills demanded by today's top employers are at your command. So why pay over $75 for other instructional videos? You can learn everything you need to know with the number one video teacher. You get six valuable programs, over four and a half hours of professional instruction for just $24.95. That's two videos for the price of one. Call and get started today with the number one video teacher for computers. Order now. See myself in this car. Solid, not fragile. This is James' car. Be nothing fancy, nothing parallel or anything. Just park. All I can see is highways swerving up and down and, and just wait for them to happen to notice. Oh, is that Jane driving by in that beautiful new car? And then just drive away. CIBC Personal Vision Banking and Car Ownership. To see how to get the credit you've earned, see your CIBC personal banker or call us. And I can see where I'm going. I see where I want to be. At CIBC, we're working to see what you see. Prominently on display, just behind the home end, here at the Metro Center in Halifax, are the prizes that go to the winning team.
And of course, the big prize awaiting the winner is a trip to the World Championships to be held in Brandon, Manitoba from April the 8th to the 16th. And the Keystone Center is going to be sold out for each and every draw. And Manitoba's Kerry Burtnick would like to join Connie Laliberti of Winnipeg in representing Canada at the World Championships in Brandon. Connie and her rank out of the Fort Rouge Curling Club. But there are still six ends remaining in this championship battle against Brad Height of Robert. And Height would like to return to Brandon because he was disappointed with his performance in the Briar back in Brandon in 1982. Yes, he certainly would like to get back. Your way, Dan. And the tone for that Briar round robin record. Well, there certainly is the Connie Laliberti at work that Carrie Burtnick is uh, very much aware of, and that's when she wins. The Manitoba men usually win as well. Well, in 1984, Mike Riley followed up by winning the Briar in a playoff Room. with. Room. Ed Wernick, when the Briar was held in Victoria. Room. How's the way? And in 1992, uh, okay. in Regina, yeah. Manitoba's yeah. Vic Peters Easy. defeated Easy. Russ Howard. Yeah. 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 Well, Kerry ah. said not only is there the Cody factor, but there's the fact that he has Three. returned to Halifax, Burn. the place which, where he won it all in 1981. So he saw that as very good karma. And also, he's won the Manitoba Championship seven years apart, and this is the third time he's done it. So I guess there is a significant sister in gambling with three sets. Same way tonight. And he's being very aggressive this end, so he really wants to get back to Brandon. He's good. Terry Burton asking Keith Fenton to pull the rock around the center of the a great job. Partially buried in a very tricky spot. Just nudging the Manitoba Stone back into the eight foot. Well, you know, Keith Fenton put that rock about half behind the center guard. And I do not think with any takeout weight that you can make that particular shot with takeout weight. You almost have to play exactly the same shot that Brad Height called for, just to come down in front of it. Keith Fenton has the luxury here, of course, of playing exactly the same shot that he played with his first one. He'd like to stagger this a bit on the inside of the Yellow Rock belonging to Saskatchewan. If he does that, then Manitoba can come Hurry. along and maybe hit it later on and be laying two or three if he staggers it correctly. Look at that. Pretty good shot. See, now if he hits it on the high side, just about three quarters on the outside, he can spill the Saskatchewan rock and still save his own. So that's what I meant by staggers. You can see the picture right there. And Brad Height knows it. He's thinking, now how can I get out of here? Just by light. Very Height was careful. forced to take one on the fourth end with last stone. So as a result, with the game tied at three, Burtnick has last rock on this fifth end. I think I might run the front. Which I really might. Like? Play that straight back? Yeah, that's the danger rock. You play like hit, hit weight? He like hits hit, it on hit, hit weight? Yeah, normal hit. As long as we're relatively close, we're good. Okay. Yeah, that's not set up good closer. <laughs> Mark Dacey just confirming that this is not a good set up well for them on this end. Nose is nice. I don't like just it. Just off too the nose quiet. either way is okay. If he hits it on the nose, he'll kill one of the Manitoba rocks. No! There's about four Clean. different combinations oh, yeah. that could happen here. He hits it on the high side. Oh. No! No! He'll kill no. one of the Manitoba yep. rocks. That's a good shot. That's an excellent curling shot. Take that rock off the center line, which is the key. I got her. That's better than the way it was sitting. Terry Burton, of course, has a corner to go around, but Saskatchewan still got that rock in play. And that's Bumper weight. Terry's going to hit it almost on it the nose or a quick roll. fist behind. That's exactly right. Either get the roll behind or hit it right on the nose, and that other one will chip the red one behind the corner guard. Yep. Oh, 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 oh. Right off. 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 
Harry indicated to Rob that it was his fault. What did he mean by that? Well, I think he uh, maybe felt he gave him a little bit too much ice there for that particular shot. Straight up. Been listening to you and Colleen over the years. I didn't think Skip's ever made mistakes. Oh, yes. Lots of them. <laughs> Don might, but I certainly don't make any. Clang! Oh! 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 No! So the complexion no, of this end never. is going to change ah. rather quickly. Come on. Well, the it's going to change here again because... Hang on there. Good shot. Good oh boy. I thought maybe that rock might roll out. If he rolled out, the advantage goes to Burton because sure he's got a wide out. open hit. Yeah, he was soft enough. But that rock pulled it up, and you just heard Daisy say he was soft enough that it moved a bit at the end. So now Saskatchewan lies too. going on here. Terry's looking for a little bit of an inside roll. That corner guard looms large. No, no, keep it up. Brad Height wants to roll behind it. And any kind of a guard in a curling game is dangerous with your offense or defense. Kevin Martin played a guard yesterday. No. I'm sure he'd love to have that Whoa. rock back. Uh, he talked about the guard Whoa. he attempted to play in the second end. Whoa. Almost to the conclusion of his 7 and 9 3 loss to Terry Burtnick of Manitoba. As a matter of fact, he was quoted after saying it was one of the stupid shots of my career. Saskatchewan again lies two as Mark Dacey removes the Manitoba stone. Now, this rock being away over on the right hand side, there's a good opportunity. If Manitoba hits a half a rock, they could either roll in behind the corner guard. Or if they hit it a little bit thinner, they could roll all the way over behind that rock that is just biting the 12 foot belonging to Saskatchewan. Oh, watch the roll. Easy. Yeah. Oh, he had to curl just a fraction more and he would have been in behind the bar. Now a little easier for Brad Height to hit and roll. Near the center. Same shot. Yeah. Look at how much ice they're taking on these takeouts, right on the edge and sometimes in the center of the rock. Well, at the start of our telecast, Colleen talked no. about the humidity and Close. how much of a problem yeah. it was uh, earlier in the week no, when the temperature right was right. unseasonably high. With the outside oh. temperature dropping below freezing, sure. ice conditions yeah. inside yeah. have improved to the delight of ice maker Bill Harris. Oh, it looked like it was going to run on the line and she got off. Loose quick there. Yes, ice makers are the only ones smiling year to year when it's uh, sunny and cold. Positions the broom right on the stone for third Jeff Ryan. Hurry! Come on, they want to hit it on the high side and make the double. Well, that one might be measured. I'm not sure whether it's nibbling the ring or not. It's very, very close. Sorry, that might give me a shade more. Okay. So maybe give me a shade more. Need to hit a little left? I had to hit it. Well, oh, Jeff Ryan rolling out of the rings there. Now for Mark Stacy, he's got a chance to put a rock in a great position here. He'd like it in here and hopefully get a little bit of movement on it so that it moves in behind the guard. But he'd like to get it right in front of the tee line there. And if that rock is in on the edge of the rings, he could be lying too. playing the raise as opposed to the come around. Don't quite get it there. And Kerry Burtnick is now going to take a look to see Had whether that zone is biting yeah. or not. Line was no good. No matter what way it is through. Just way too little ice. 
I went hard on the, on the first one, too, with your both of each. Hot in my head. Oh, that one. Roll in even, or yeah. On the outside side. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Well, Kerry Burton's going to try and come down here and hit this rock. If he hits it, he gets a little bit of movement on his shooter. He may catch a corner of the rings, but more importantly, this rock will make contact and we may spin in here behind cover. And that's exactly what he's there looking for. Even. He wants to get movement on the one that he's trying to make contact with so that he rolls it in behind. He may roll them both in. Now, mentioning the, mentioning the humidity and the frost buildup in the Metro Center earlier in the week, playing a shot on the outside as Burtnick is now was extremely difficult with all the frost to the outside of the sheet. Yes, there's no question about it. And you had to throw it a little bit stronger and it would usually fall away against the target. We saw a lot of oh. curlers wind up throwing freezes instead of uh, hits. Whoa. They were trying to hit, but it Never. would wind up with a freeze. Oh, oh. oh, that's a good result. That's a great result. He wanted to hit a little bit, a little bit more flush, Don, and roll it behind that corner guard, but where he rolled to was a perfect spot. A sigh of relief a more from now. Patty Burtnick. Yeah, it's quite flat and a successful there. execution of the shot sure. by Carey. You see the rock directly in behind you guys the like? guard. That isn't one of the options. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just got to come oh, down to it. That looks like more than what I gave you. That's what I gave you. That's what you put. I'll give you, Dan. Is he insinuating he moved the broom? <laughs> the brush? Gee, that looks like two darn This'll lines. work. Look, look out. <laughs> well, Brad Hyde is a very intense competitor. I like this response about catching a corner of the stone to remove that manager. That's not one of our options. Like this is about where it's really straight, isn't it? That's the side of it. All right. Over there. They start out with 70 minutes. The opposition clock stops as soon as their rock comes to rest and the Saskatchewan stone or clock begins. That was a good move by Brad Hike. You know, you get a different perspective how much broom you got when you're like sitting down in the hack here. Looks like a lot. So he got up. Went all the way down and made sure in his own Give mind. Just a sliver less. Now he changed it again. But it was a good move to go down and make sure that he didn't get the wrong impression of how much ice he had when he's sitting down here in the half. That's a good move. Right off. He wants to pull it right into the forefoot. Cap off. We got room. Just to wait. Right off. Right off. pleased with that at all. He wanted to stop in front of it. Unfortunately, just a bit heavy. He hits and rolls to the open, and it's a wide open hit for Kerry Burtnick. Brad Height doesn't hide his emotions, does he? No, he really doesn't. He's been that way all week. He's a very fiery competitor. Yeah, just two feet less weight. You know, because if he stops in front of it, Kerry's got a tough time getting two. But he just touched it and rolled to the open. So Burtnick now with the final stone of N5 has an opportunity to pick up a pair. And that would give Manitoba the biggest lead that either side has enjoyed in this championship game. It was all set up with Carey's first one. Oh. Clean. 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 Whoa. Oh, oh, oh. Clean. You hear him saying clean, so he's right clean down it. the line. Clean it. Hi. On target for two. And at the midpoint of this 1995 championship game, Manitoba's Kerry Burtnick looking for a Manitoba sweep leads by two. 
at 23 a.m. And Benny's getting his regular early morning long distance discount to Montreal. But look how much more he'd save with Unitel over the big guys. Later, during peak hours, Chantel would save more with Unitel on calls to mom in Miami. Why? Well, because Unitel always saves you 25% off the big guys' regular long distance rates to anywhere in North America. Round the clock, every day of the week. That means 25% savings on top of those regular time of day discounts you wait up for every night and every weekend. So, Raj would save more on his calls from London, Ontario to Vancouver anytime. Lucille would save more to Butte, Montana. Where is Montana anyway? Ah, there it is. Located, you'll note, in North America, where Unitel Long Distance always saves you 25% off the big guy's regular rates and off those time of day discounts. So why pay more? Call 1-800-575-3000 and join those savvy consumers who joined Unitel to get quality long distance for less. Forget rubbing and polishing silver, brass, and copper. Clean quickly and safely with the amazing product used by museums worldwide. Their secret is the patented Quicksilver cleaning plate. In hot water, simply dissolve washing soda. No, it's not ready yet, but watch this. Insert the Quicksilver electrolytic plate. Touch any tarnished item to it, and in seconds, it's sparkling. Clean many objects together with no smell or tainting. Pieces are instantly table ready. Quicksilver also cleans quality brass and copper, and especially gold, fine jewelry, even precious stones. Look how Quicksilver cleans intricate patterns that trap other cleaners. Simply revolve large items. Where water flows, it cleans. Quicksilver is environmentally safe and lasts for years. No mess, no fuss. The astonishing Quicksilver cleaning plate. Only $19.95 and $4 postage. Call 1-800-427-1151. That's 1-800-427-1151 to order now. Hey, want to see some dinosaurs? Yeah, dinosaurs. That's good to meet you. Loading CD-ROM in the window. Where's dinosaurs, Dad? I'm not sure. Don, can you and Scott... Can you see them now? Not yet. Big stuff. Uh, Configure jumpers and dip switches. Dad, what's a dip? I don't know. Where are you going, kiddo? To the Crandalls. Was it the Crandalls? They have a Mac. This is the fourth time that Canada's best male curlers have visited Halifax. The last time, Kerry Burtnick was the winner, and the Manitoba skip leads Saskatchewan's Brad Height 5-3 at the midpoint of this match. Now, let's go down to ice level, and here's Colleen. Let's just take a look at the recap here. You scored two in the second end, scored one in the fourth end, but still you trail Manitoba here, Brad Height, uh, at the fifth end point. Bad break on your last rock there in the fifth? Oh, not really a break. Uh... Just uh, was a little warm on my draw, trying to corner freeze on him and uh, bumped off. And it's, you know, you give him a pretty easy deuce then. We've seen some terrific shot making so far, though, in the game. Uh, you, how do you feel about the ice? It's, uh, it's really nice. It's uh, actually a little keener uh, and a little more swing to it, to it than we've had uh, actually all week. So kind of maybe a little off stride on that, but I think we've caught on to it. Well, it's been aggressive play the whole way for the first five ends, and I'm sure now that you're down two, it'll be even more so. Yeah, on our part, anyways, we're going to have to uh, go out. And uh, I guess Kevin Martin needed a touchdown and a convert yesterday. We need at least a field goal, so we'll be going. Okay, and everybody's in Robert Curling Club watching, by the way, because I've already called there. Do you want to say hi to them and tell them you're going to be back in this game? Hi, everybody back home, and we're going to give her. All right, I'm sure you will. Go score your touchdown and your convert, too. Thank you. Uh, and we'll be talking to Kerry Burtnick in just a second, but let's just quickly recap the scoring. For Kerry Burtnick, he has scored one in the first end. He scored two in the third end, and, of course, then he scored that big deuce in the fifth end as well to take control in this game, leading 5-3. Kerry Burtnick is with us now. What a shot with your first one in the fifth. I guess that right now is the turning point. Nice roll to the forefoot. Yeah, that one worked out real good for us. We had we had two or three possibilities there, and unfortunately it worked out just right for us to get the roll behind, and uh, Brad was real close to making a great shot, and, uh, and it just flopped off enough to give us a chance for two, and uh, gives us a little bit of control, but there's a long way to go, and uh, we'll see what happens. It has been a great game, really nice and aggressive for all five ends. What happens now with your two-point lead? I guess you'll be going right into the forefoot in the six. Yeah, that's most likely what we'll do. Uh, you know, I'm sure Brad's going to want to be a little more aggressive, and uh, we're not going to get overly defensive. There's still five ends to go. We're going to play the same game that we've played all the time, and, uh, you know, see, see what happens. Okay, so they shouldn't start celebrating back at the Assiniboine yet. 
No, not yet. Uh, everybody knows the game of curling's 10 ends long. We've only played five. We're only two up, and uh, it's anybody's game. Okay, Kerry Burtnick, thank you very much. Good luck the rest of the way. Kerry Burtnick and his Manitoba rink. Go ahead, say hi. I'd like to say hi to everybody at the Palace, hi to everybody at Cinnaboy Memorial, and hi to everybody at the Tressers. Jeepers, say hi to everybody. All right, coming up, our LeBat Breyer final coverage will continue right after this with Manitoba leading Saskatchewan 5-3. Stay with us. Sunday is the day the world takes a breather or gets a chance to catch up. It's our Sunday best and long Sunday drives. There's one truck designed for a day like today, Ford F-Series, with the safety of a standard driver's airbag, rear anti-lock brakes, a spacious interior, and the kind of toughness that never takes a day off. More reasons why Ford F-Series is the best-selling truck 29 years running in Canada. And that's a lot of Sundays. There are some things you can't put a price on. Fortunately, safety isn't one of them. Hi, roadside assistance. Can tell Amigo for $19.95 a month with no setup fees and no long-term commitment. Because if you had to put a price on safety, this is it. Can tell Amigo. As the thermometer drops, dangerous crystals can form in your car's engine, threatening to shorten its life. That's why today's Quaker State has engineered intelligent oil. Oil that senses the changing threats in your engine and adapts its own molecular structure for continuous protection. Whenever the driving conditions change, so does Quaker State. The intelligent oil for longer engine life. Scotties are softer now. Pass it on. Scotties are softer now. Pass it on. Scotties are softer now. Pass it on. From Scott Paper, our softest Scotties ever, in beautiful decorator boxes. Scotties are softer now. <laughs> Sixty-seven specialty repair centers across Canada. The largest network of automotive professionals and your traditional neighborhood garage, all in one. Auto Pro, the largest network of automotive professionals. Beautiful Halifax Harbor and the Angus L. McDonald Bridge. All the curlers have enjoyed the scenery here in Halifax for the Labatt Briar. Right now at Manitoba enjoying the view as they lead by two over Saskatchewan after five ends. With their thoughts in the game, we go upstairs to Don and Don. Thank you, Colleen. Don, it's been a very well-played curling game, and uh, Kerry Burtnick has made some spectacular shots on television the last two days. Yesterday, of course, in the second end against Kevin Martin of Alberta, and today in the fourth end, he made a great double against Brad Height. Well, it was a really gambling-type shot, Don, because if he doesn't hit it right, he could take out his own and leave really Brad uh, Height a draw for three or just a chat back for three. So it was a gambling type shot, but I've watched Kerry a lot over the years, and you'll see it here on the monitor that he just makes a great double kill. I mean, if he hits it any thinner, he may not end up as good as he does. Well, in positioning the broom, he talked so precisely about wanting to hit the stone about an inch and a half off center, and that always amazes me, as you say, when they throw it the length of the ice and are so precise with their shots. But Brad Hyde is by no means finished. No, and, uh, you know, you really get a tiger by the tail when he gets down because he's noted for playing a running-type game, but he can finesse it, and he's going to do everything to throw up corner guards and come around behind them or even center guards. So he's going to gamble a lot, and Kerry's really going to have to watch the sneak attack. Well, Kerry realizes that he was able to come back from a 5-2 deficit with two ends remaining to force an extra end in their battle between the first and second place teams. So he knows that Brad Hyde and his Carabert crew are certainly capable of coming back. 5-3, Manitoba leads. Now let's go back to ice level, and here's Colleen. Thanks, Dom. One of the interested curlers and now spectators at this year's event is Pat Ryan. He's been in four Briar finals. He knows all about the pressure. You've won it three times. Now your brother Jeff is trying to do what you have done. What advice did you give him prior to the game? 
Well, you got to know Jeff. I don't think he's going to take a whole lot of advice from his big brother. He's uh, he does things his own way, and uh, he has his own way of preparing for a game. And and uh, I think the best thing for me to do is just stay out of it. Their team's obviously done a lot better than ours this week, and and uh, I just you know give him a little bit a bit of encouragement. Say go out there, play loose, and enjoy yourself. And uh, things will work for you. We talked earlier in the week and you were really excited about the possibility of Jeff winning a Briar title. Are you nervous watching him at all? A little bit. Uh, I find maybe sometimes I get frustrated when somebody misses a shot or uh, I get anxious when the other team makes a great shot, but uh, I'm not that, it's not really that bad. I guess I've been in enough of them. I think my dad's nervous up there. <laughs> I can see him just, he's just squeezing his hands together and having a lot of uh, anxious moments. Hey, whatever it takes. Now you're gonna be up in the broadcast booth with uh, Don Whitman and Don Duggan about the seventh end, helping out with the commentary. Right now we're going to uh, go to commercial and we'll be back with the sixth end action of our Labatt Briar final with Manitoba leading Saskatchewan 5-3. Stay with us here on CBC. It doesn't take a thief long to steal a car. Police reports show that on average, one car is stolen every 20 seconds. It's time to get serious about crime prevention. It's time for the club. The club is a state-of-the-art tempered steel locking device that's tough to defeat. Once attached to your vehicle, thieves see it and move on, leaving your car or truck right where you parked it. Except no cheap imitations. Make sure your anti-theft device says the club on the handle. Never park your car without it. Introducing the Dremel Moto Tool. You cut, we cut. You sharpen, we sharpen. You polish, we polish. You drill, we drill. You clean, we clean. You sand, we sand. You grind, we grind. You hammer. Did I mention we cut? The Dremel Moto Tool. With more than 150 available accessories, why settle for some two-bit power tool? Wonderful. Look how it brings people together. Last time I was at the dentist, things were not going well. But doctor, I asked, I've been using baking soda, why didn't it help? Maggie said it's not enough. It's got to be in the cavity-fighting toothpaste. There's a baking soda toothpaste from Crest. We've added baking soda's fresh feeling of clean to the cavity-fighting power of Crest. So I brushed with Crest baking soda, and my next checkup was terrific. Baking soda crest. Feel the clean. Fight the cavities. Rust. What it can do to the outside of your car. Weak, neglected antifreeze can do to the inside. You need the tough anti-corrosion formula of Prestone. Use fresh Prestone every year to give your radiator and cooling system heavy-duty rust and corrosion protection. No matter what happens to the outside, Prestone protects the inside. Prestone stops the rust that stops your car. Look for Prestone Defroster to help remove frost from car windshields, wipers, and mirrors. Welcome back to CBC's live coverage of the Labatt Briar Championship Games. Manitoba's Terry Burtnick leading Saskatchewan's Brad Hype 5 3. We're ready for the sixth end. We go upstairs to the broadcast booth and Don and Don. The Labatt Briar Tanker is the prize that awaits the winner of this game. It was first awarded in 1980. Rick Folk of Saskatchewan was the winner that year. The 15 times it has been presented, the team that has finished, finished first during the week of round robin play has won the tanker. You know, when they went from the old system following the 1979 Briar to the playoff format, there were some curlers a little concerned about the playoff format and the fact that the uh, best team all week wouldn't necessarily emerge as the champion of Canada. But those fears have been put to rest with 12 out of 15 Briar champions finishing first. No question about it. It was tradition with round robin play. I mean, if you got off to a very poor start years ago, you were finished. If you lost your first three games, because normally the Briar 9 and 1 would win it, 9 and 2. And uh, now the playoff system, I think, is great for curling. Gives the other teams a shot at, at least making the playoffs. 
like you say, the top team, Bob, in the last 15 years has won it, so the system has proven that it is correct. The playoffs make it so interesting because uh, it's, it's, it's sudden death. The curlers always reluctant to change. They were reluctant about the first time they changed the playoffs. They were reluctant about the free guard zone. They were reluctant when push brooms came in. So. <laughs> yes, we've seen a lot of changes in our game in the last uh, 10, 15 years. From 12 ends to 10. Yep. Yep. The new playoff format, the free guard zone. The time, time clock. Right People were reluctant about time clocks when they came in. Practicing before a game on the same sheet. Fifth players. Coaching. Great commentator. <laughs> well, just like Bert Mick said during the fifth end, he was going to put it in the forefoot. He had no choice about that. He's got it there. And Saskatchewan threw up the corner guard, and it can't be removed because it's in the free guard zone. Room. You mentioned one of the changes. The fifth player, good, Brian good. Derboka, is the down. Saskatchewan fifth. Oh, good way. And the Manitoba good. fifth is hey. Come on. Dennis Spillion. Come on. Come on. And neither right of the fifth players on Come either side has been more. pressed into action this more. week. Three. But they have been in attendance at each and every draw, providing support and uh, doing a lot of the little things, including cheering for the team, but also uh, coming out and checking the rocks, uh, making sure everything is in readiness for the team when they step onto the ice. And a perfect guard thrown up by Keith Fenton of Manitoba. Maybe a little bit longer than Kerry wanted, but let me tell you, it is absolutely dead in front of the Manitoba shot rock in the eighth. Dennis Villian, whom we just saw, said he wasn't nervous when he got to the rink until he saw the prize table and realized that the fifth also got a prize. Ah, that work. Back for it. I'll go right up. Come on, man. Excellent shot. Well, they were actually looking for a corner free so they could maybe play it on the next shot around if Manitoba didn't put on a perfect guard. But where he slipped to is a pretty good spot. You know, it's partially behind the guard. Kerry, of course, would like to hit and maybe roll a little bit in the open. And yeah. if he's going to roll, he'd like to roll a good two, three feet away from the center. Because if he rolls just a bit, then Saskatchewan can hit it and roll into the boards with the center. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great oh. shot. A little bit too much. Manitoba lies too as Rob Meekin removes the Saskatchewan shot stone. Well, Keith Fenton put on such a good guard, Don. Like, I mean, it's right dead in front of the one belonging to Manitoba in the eight, but the, the Brad Height says it's too dangerous. I'm going to run this one off because. The way the ice is running, it runs very, very straight. It's hard to duck around that center guard, so he's going to take it off. Both Manitoba rocks are in perfect position there. The guard and then the rock in the house is above the T-line. Okay. That's a good shot. They should have maybe swept that one a little bit and uh, hit it a little bit uh, more on the angle and made the double. But at least he's pushed the rock into the open, and he can get at it now. Draw in here, okay, good. And the danger rock for Saskatchewan is that one out in front, protecting the four foot area. This is a nice call by Kerry Burtnick. It's hard to just chip in off of the red rock and roll both zones behind the guard. Not for long. Yeah. Not for long. Yeah. long. Whoa, oh, oh, Gonna need it. Not bad. Not bad. Gonna need it. Yeah. The super saying he's gonna need it because he's quiet. Hard. Three. They were actually sweeping that because he was light, and Kerry was trying to hit that a little bit thinner, but Kerry wasn't calling it for the sweep because he had a half a rock and he wasn't going to get much of a roll. Now for Saskatchewan, there's a chance he could make the double and roll behind the center guard, and he could be out of this end. He could actually end up maybe making a triple here. Correctly. I'm yeah. just going to say the way those stones are lined up, there yeah. is the possibility of spilling all three red rocks. Whoa! Oh, no. no. Oh. Oh. Sorry, my fault. Went back. Yeah, that's what she had to. You heard Brad Height saying it went back. He actually had the double at one time and the rock floated back. 
And you hear him, heard him apologize to Dwayne Chargers because it looked like he had two doubles in a row with two shots, but ended up with nothing. Now for Kerry, yeah. big shot here is to hit and just roll and leave a corner open behind right. the guard. Mm -hmm. Manitoba lies three. Fine shot making by Jeff Ryan, who in everyday life is a car leasing manager with Landau Lincoln Mercury in Winnipeg. Third straight year we've had a Ryan in the final. Play this one. Okay. Normal. Oh. Keep it up. But Jeff has a long way to go to duplicate the performance of older brother Pat. Who skipped his rank to back to back prior titles oh, in yeah. 1988 and 89. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. Oh. Whoa. Well, Jeff is younger whoa. than yeah. Pat. He's got a couple oh. of Playing years. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hard. Oh, oh darn. Twice That's now they've good just shot. rubbed that shot stone. That's three chances they've had at doubles and really bad luck. They should have got at least two of them, but they didn't get any. And that's unfortunate because now Kerry Burtnick can simply play the I guard. I try this. I think that's the shot. It's not in, is it? No. Okay. That's a tough raise. Hit that raise at yellow. It's a tough shot. You need to hit the stick on it, too. Let's drop. Split him around. You heard Jeff sure. Ryan saying, just a draw, split him around, and that's exactly, he liked to hit a corner of the rock, just a slight corner of the rock, move a shooter in behind the center guard, yeah. and roll the other one in behind Hurry. the corner guard. Hurry. And if they can make this shot, they're really going for the jugular. It Boy, wouldn't leave Saskatchewan as much. This Hurry. rock is cutting big time. They got to go so they don't spray Saskatchewan in. Hurry. Oh, boy. But Saskatchewan has four shots. Manitoba still lies three. They just touched that stone at the top. Well, a little bit of a break for Manitoba there, and that rock curls a little bit more. They push it in for third shot. Yeah. Same way. Now they want the double and the roll. If they Keep it up. Make yeah. the double on the high side. They'll get the roll in behind the center guard and the long guard. Which conveniently, both guards are on Saskatchewan. Right off! No! Well, they don't like this one. No! Right off! Saying no all the way down. It's still on the high side. He drove it straight back. Manitoba still has shot stone, but now second shot belongs to Saskatchewan. My usual. Sorry. Not bad. A double in the roll would have been a peach. What's he playing? Well, I think for Kerry Burton, he wants to bring the rock in here, a la Kevin Martin. He doesn't want it that Imagine far what? out. He certainly doesn't want it up tight and over a little bit so that he lines maybe up a double raise. He wants that guard maybe a fraction back here, but he certainly wants to cover it up. And well, Kerry just wishes he could move the stone around as easily as you do as the telestrator. You can see how they're lined up. Saskatchewan can simply hit that rock on the nose and drive it right back and lay behind the corner guard and the center guard if Terry doesn't put the uh, nice guard on it. The hair more. Talking about inches, now it's hair. <laughs> I want it tight, but I don't want it long either. I heard him say, I want it tight, but I don't want it long either. Saying, as soon as he let it go, he's got line. Come on, it's good line. Come on, good line. Now they're Three. gonna brush hard. It's over. Three. Yep. Good line. Keep going. Yep. Hurry. Three. Come on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Covers it up pretty nice. But out looming there on the outturn side is a long double raise. For Saskatchewan. Enough. And he's picked it out. Nice, so straight down, is it? Play back eight. 
A little battery just through, maybe, eh? Yeah. I think that's less ice now. Oh, I hate when he does that. <laughs> He, I think he's accusing Mark Dacey of moving the broom a little bit on him. But this is a difficult yeah. shot, a double angle race, because if he doesn't make it, left. he's got major problems. Terry will simply play the intern draw and lie two. And when you're two up, that's a difficult thing, so he has to make the shot. He makes the shot, there's a good chance he's going to score two and maybe three, because there's a rock very oh, close, just biting yeah. the top no. of the twelve. No! Is he looking? Throw it pitiful. You heard him say he threw it pitiful. Not only was it pitiful, wasn't enough weight out he there either. pitiful, but he was pretty quiet. He had no weight well, to move that rock so at all. Was it looking? If you want to play Kitty by bar the door, you could place the rock there. But I know Kerry Burtnick, he likes to play very aggressively, and he likes to pull that rock in there. And if he can just so, sh show Brad Hike just a corner of it and just tuck it in there, then he's completely covered off the forefoot, and Mark Dees, um, Brad Hike may not have a shot. If he could just partially bury this around that guard, he could steal maybe one, maybe two points. Weight. Whoa. Right there. Whoa, then. You hear Whoa. him say the weight Rude. there. Whoa. There's lots Whoa. of room. Whoa. Whoa. Ah, top eight. Wait, 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 wait. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. 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 <laughs> really deeper than he wanted. He wanted just the top of the eight foot, but Manitoba <laughs> does lie to. Well, I don't know whether it's too deep. I think you'd like it to have curled a bit more and maybe buried a little bit. You can see it's open, but the way that runs there, Don, you cannot hit that on the inside. Hit heavy's not bad. Might hit six one of those two. Well, you can't take this one or we get nothing. Well, I know. So we got to get cross face. Cross there. face first and then wait back. Yep. Oh, boy. going to come down here, Don, like he says, come across the face and hope to drive oh this one at an angle gotta be good. into the four-foot area. And like you heard him just say, it's got to be good. Boy, that oh, hole yeah. looks awfully we give him. small to get through. Well, it is small. Probably be tight to those outside ones, so maybe you rub off. Well, Saskatchewan's championship hopes could very well rest on this final stone of the sixth end being delivered now by Brad Hyde. Oh. Oh. Shot. A steal of two for Manitoba. And Manitoba has jumped into a four-point lead with four ends remaining. It's 7-3 for Kerry Burtnick of Manitoba. When two-time world champion Ed Wernick started using the hammer, people laughed. Hey, yeah. It looks like a toy. Last year, Ed's team was the leading money winner on the Pro Tour. Now who's <laughs> laughing? When Ed Wernick first used the hammer, people laughed. World champion Russ Howard is the winningest skip in Briar history and Ed's number one rival. Russ has chosen the hammer. Now who's laughing? For more information about the hammer with quick change faceplates, call 1-800-567-7757.
5.23 a.m. and Benny's getting his regular early morning long distance discount to Montreal. But look how much more he'd save with Unitel over the big guys. Later, during peak hours, Chantel would save more with Unitel on calls to mom in Miami. Why? Well, because Unitel always saves you 25% off the big guys' regular long distance rates to anywhere in North America. Around the clock, every day of the week. That means 25% savings on top of those regular time of day discounts you wait up for every night and every weekend. So, Raj would save more on his calls from London, Ontario to Vancouver anytime. Lucille would save more to Butte, Montana. Where is Montana anyway? Ah, there it is. Located, you'll note, in North America, where Unitel Long Distance always saves you 25% off the big guys' regular rates and off those time of day discounts. So why pay more? Call 1-800-575-3000 and join those savvy consumers who joined Unitel to get quality long distance for less. You've always got time Time for something wild You've always got time Time for some fresh taste Tim Horton's wild blueberry brand mustard Baked fresh every day First sip of wild blueberries Get relief with Extra Strength Tylenol Gel Caps. All the headache relief of Extra Strength Tylenol covered in a gelatin coating, making it easier to swallow. So effective pain relief isn't a pain to swallow. Gel Caps took my headache away. They did the trick for me. It worked fast for me. Extra Strength Tylenol Gel Caps. The strength you want from a name you trust. Welcome back to the Metro Center in Halifax, where... Manitoba's Kerry Burtnick, the 1981 champion, has taken a four-point lead with four ends remaining. Jeff Ryan's older brother, Pat, joins us now in the broadcast booth, and Pat is a two-time Canadian champion as a skip back-to-back -back titles, 88-89, third stone last year for Rick Folk, and I guess it's safe to assume that your emotions lie with the Buffalo in this championship game. Well, there's no doubt about that, Don. <laughs> Watching my little brother play, it's... Uh... It's just as actually more exciting for, for me to watch this game than it is to be playing it. You talked about your father being very nervous in the stands. He must have had mixed emotions when BC played Manitoba in round robin action. Yeah, I think he's just a solid neutral on that one, and he was uh, enjoying the game just like uh, he was going to win either way. <laughs> Stay away, then. We talked during the fifth end break that Kerry Burton saved some of well, his best shots for the semifinal well, yesterday well, and the final today. Well, he has really been at the top of his game well, nice Saturday shot. and Sunday this weekend. Oh, well, that's right, Don. I've been uh, obviously watching both their games, and Kerry has been solid right from the first rock on. He's, uh, he's got a very high percentage. Uh, you've got it, 88% at this point. And he, he's been doing that right since his first rock. And the, you notice the, his team was a little bit... Uh, uh, off their game to begin with. The carries come through in both the semifinal and here today uh, with big shots right right the way through. He's he's probably going to go that way all the way along. And regardless of the score, you know, he plays very aggressively, whether he's one up or one down or two up or three up. He plays aggressive all the time, you know. And, that, and of course, that's been his trait for a good many years in, in Manitoba. That's right, Don. Carries noted as being uh, one of the all-out aggressive players in, on the circuit and uh, probably worked to his detriment uh, over the years and keeping him times. keeping him from getting to these uh, briars because I think he's played in some provincials where the ice conditions aren't that good for the finesse game and uh, just probably got caught up in it but uh, yeah <laughs> I, where we'd be peeling guards off in this game he's he's still putting up yeah. guards and, and junking it up and I yeah. guess it's either win win earlier or, uh, oh, he's okay. or, or let the other team back in he's there he's there Right. Okay, if you're Brad Height, what do you do now? You start freezing them, going around the corner guards. You're certainly not going to play any takeouts. Well, the corner guard up there is uh, a factor, but by Kerry putting a second rock in, now Brad's going to have to play to the center. Uh, but the, the ice is moving good to the wing, so uh, that corner guard still can come into play. So he'll probably just come down and try and move this move red one back a little bit and create some backing for uh, a little later in the end. Dan Ormsby with his second stone of this seventh end. Real hard, guys. Come on, move it.
go all the way. It's all right. Manitoba still lies too. Arsby's takeout percentage is low, but he has only thrown one takeout. So sometimes those percentages can be a little misleading, but I don't think there's much doubt about the 88% of Terry Burton. No, Terry's, Terry's right on his game. He's, it's a beautiful double he made that one end. I think it was in the uh, fourth, fourth, end. fourth end. Yep. It's a beautiful, beautiful shot. Really difficult, and uh, he had all things to lose on that. He could have given up a three-ender very easily, but uh, came right through, played the gutsy shot, and made it. Yes, he's playing with a lot of confidence, and he's making a lot of shots, and... You know, yesterday, uh, he kept his team in the game, the per early going, the first couple ends, and he just carried that over into this game. Lots of experience, I guess, Don. You know, Kerry's been in Briars before. He's won the Briar before, and of, of all the players on the team, just looking at them at the beginning of the game, he was just completely relaxed. And he knew he'd been here before, and, and that's a big advantage, I think. Oh, yes. You can't beat experience. Wayne Charters is being asked to draw behind the corner guard. Work. Oh. Off the okay, hard now. Break the finish. Go on. And you're right. It moves big time. Right. And they're a good finish. And it's directly behind the corner guard. So that's a pretty good start for Saskatchewan. Wayne's been uh, just excellent all week. I think he's the high, percent high percentage curler of all the players here at the Briar. Uh, Surprised. I was surprised to see him hitting and going out today. I don't know whether he's just a little bit off, but uh, he hasn't been uh, as sharp as I've seen him all week long. He was the All-Star second, and he had an 87% average throughout the week. That was fine curling. Yeah, that was that was even higher than leads, and generally it, those uh, percentages descend from lead down to skip. But uh, at second to have the high percentage, that uh, speaks for itself. Rob Meekin, sorry, Colleen, has removed the uh, Saskatchewan stone. Manitoba now lies too. We noticed yesterday during the semifinal that the ice seemed to have changed quite a bit the, compared to what it was during the round robin. And Don, you had asked uh, Brad whether or not he had taken some mental notes about the changes in the ice. And he commented that no, he hadn't. And we have seen throughout the first five ends Saskatchewan rubbing on a couple of guards in that crucial end, the fifth end. Brad racked up with his first draw come around. So you wonder if maybe they didn't pick up on some of those changes in the ice. Well, Colleen, there's been an absolute dramatic change in the ice since the uh, rain stopped out here in Halifax. The final day of the round robin, uh, the frost was so thick it was, it was like you were sweeping snow out of the way of the rocks. And, uh, and uh, as you recall, Brad came through big on that day and qualified us in second place. What do you want to play here? Uh, here we're back to... Good briar ice again. It's uh, yeah, the humidity is down and, and the ice yeah. is moving uh, in all directions. It's uh, sliding good on the wings uh, as opposed to when we were on the frost. It was uh, very, very heavy out there on the sides. A rock here on this particular shot that Jeff's throwing would just grab and suck itself uh, right oh, off to the left oh, and probably, ah. probably rack on the guard. Right you can't help but wonder, though, if Burtnick playing yesterday is a uh, big advantage because he was able to see the ice conditions yesterday. Ooh, there's a big Terry Burtnick uh, say to Jeff, uh, my fault. I think he got a little bit too much ice there. And oh. that rock, uh, well, it Maybe moved a, a bit, up. didn't come over enough. Maybe a little up. It's weight sensitive ice, Pat. I mean, if you uh, throw a little bit overweight uh, playing the outturn go side hard, going man. down here, this rock will run straight and maybe back off of that. <laughs> well, I think we just saw that. I think Jeff was a little Hurry, bit up on coming. his weight and uh, no movement, but. I, st I still think you're probably going to have in the back of your mind uh, those rocks that were just cutting across to the outside uh, earlier in the week. Coming. Play another freeze on that right there. Yeah. It's a nice line. And even if we bump it just a little, as long as we're lined up on the inside, like to move it back, then we'll get that double in play right now. He can peel it across the top fairly easy with that turn. I don't mind the freeze again. Freeze like on the yellow? Right on the yellow, and if you bump it a couple inches, as long as we stay to the inside of it, it's nice. Yeah, that's a pretty good shot. Okay, let's do that. Or else we can hit it. Hit it right now. Yeah, but then we might hit an easy double. A little worried well, about no, that. we'll hit it right on the nose and flop ours in front of there, red. But then he's going to have a double back on top of this. Yeah. Let's no, go this freeze. come down and touch it. Okay. Freeze to our yellow, or touch it just a hair. How was that weight there, Wayne? Each side is allowed two timeouts, and with 28-26 remaining on their clock, Saskatchewan took the timeout. 
just a really interesting end shaping up for Saskatchewan. They can get right back in this game if Manitoba's not careful. Well, what Brad Heidi is asking Daisy to do here is to freeze on the inside of the third shot or the second shot rock belonging to their team. I mean, he's got to be very careful here that he doesn't Tight. set up a double because they Tight. can spill them all. Off. Yes, it is. Way back. Come on. They might as well take it back as far as they can go now. Hopefully, by the other rock. Okay. Well, that's not a bad shot. That actually ended up in a better, a better spot. All those little kickers are. Yes. Oh, you runner, though. You never can let it have the center line in effect. It was over the center line immediately, so that's the difference. He throws it so that it runs, it runs a long way, then it comes off. Yeah. No, I don't want to do that. Let's just hit this one. Stick here is good. If we can rub this one, that's good. Okay. Regular weight. I think what they want to do here is just hit that rock and maybe even roll uh, Jeff's rock out of the way. And even if he sits there, it's not a bad shot. Well, I'm just to get you back in. <laughs> <laughs> Terry Turn was a pretty good comment to Brad about doing our best to try and get you back into this game. Much of a feeling came anyway. Well, any time that uh, you have two rocks in the earring and the opposing team has three, you know that uh, something could happen. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, hey. whoa. Whoa. Uh, well, whoa. if he hits that front yellow uh, one, then he could end whoa. up making the double. Oh. I'd like to move his own a bit. That's a good shot. That's not bad. Not bad. Not bad. That Yellowstone's locked in there, though, for the duration yeah. now. Yeah. It's going to be a factor right down, right down to the last rock. Well, and leading by four, this is a situation you don't want to get into. If that many stones in play in the rings. Did no, the one? Fr oh. free guard zone mm -hmm. is pretty hard to... Uh, one over a bit? You did, maybe a bit. I didn't, you know, I might have moved it Hard to deepen the rest well, of the game. Very difficult to... Uh, uh, maybe just move it back. ...to keep everything clean in the free guard zone. What? Maybe just move it back? Maybe what? Just move it back, or do you want to just be on top? I don't like that moving it back stuff. Well, I think <laughs> if we stay on the right angle, Brad, we stay right there. That's playing too much, and you get it just off, and he's going to have it. If I get it just off, then at least this one's going on to that, and then on to that. I want to play it enough that we're either doing it ourselves or leaving right the way they are. We're only Over getting rid of one rock if we hit, eh? One of theirs. What? We're only getting rid of one of theirs if we hit. That's what I know, but we're laying uh, second and third. We could get all three of these and lay three right now. You want to hit that on the nose, the outside? No. All right, let's do that. Throw north, like you're up normally. Eh? Okay. Okay. Sure, we stay is the main thing, eh? What? Stay is the main thing? Okay, what they're looking at is to come Triple down here up, and hit this one on the outside. And if they hit it right, they could spill all these rocks. This one go out here, and this one will go out here. A little bit of a gamble here, because if they ever move that yellow one, they got a lot of problems. So yeah, it's a little bit of a gamble, but I guess when you're down four points, you got to go for the gusto here. I guess they're trying. They're still looking at that side yellow one. It looks like it's out of play, and they're trying to bring it back into play. Yes. And this is their probably their last opportunity. No. Well. Ah! Close. No. Get all three. They're hanging around. Oh, what a beautiful shot. That's a great shot. Oh, boy. And as Terry Burton said, we're trying to let you back in the game. And that shot by Martin Easy just put him back in the game. I was right where we wanted, and they all hurried. And I, oh, no, he's going back. Mark's been making hit and rolls all day, right from the time he stepped on the ice. He's been putting Manitoba in trouble each end. It's funny how Brad's hearing improved so quickly, though, after Mark made the shot. <laughs> you mean he's listening to him now? <laughs> yeah, Brad's pretty, uh, pretty uh, fixed in his way, and he, he knows what he wants to do out there, and I think he lets the team know. But the big break they got was that rock was hanging on in the corner there because it looked like it might have spun out, hit the boards, but... It's a great shot. Couldn't have hit it any better. See how Kerry responds. Yeah. Great. Whoa. Hurry. Yeah. Hurry. 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 Can he get a double? 
Rowan! Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 boy. Oh, that's a great shot. Big shot. That's an all-Canadian turning shot again. We've seen a lot of them this week, and that is a great shot. So it brings the cornerback guard back into play, though. Yeah. He can now uh, put that second rock around and still have a shot for his uh, three-ender if he ignores those two on what the side. What do you see of this one? Uh, pass? I think he has to go around the corner yeah, guard. Shot, yeah, right there. I think so. I don't you know, know whether he's got enough room to play yeah, the other turn. Hit on that one on the side. Full 12 plus an inch. Plus two inches. <laughs> Just to make sure. <laughs> Skip always has to have the last word. Mark said, full 12 plus an inch. Brad said, two inches. Okay, Mark Casey's going to try to pull this rock in this area here. He'd like to get it in as tight, and the big thing okay, is pull it in a little bit like that. Maybe there. just leave a half a rock showing on the shot clock. He cannot hit the rock on the right-hand side belonging to Manitoba because if he hits it, his shooter will roll out. And he even may take out his, the other one, so okay. this is a good shot to try and get three. Puts it in perfect. Nope, got room. A lot of room. Right off. Off in! He's a long room. way out. Boy. A ton of room! Come by it! Pass it! Come on! Now they're going to try and pull it by the one biting the eight foot. Come on! They don't, certainly don't want to touch it. Come on! Oh, whoa, on whoa. It. whoa, yeah. Good shot, but he wanted that rock that much on the inside as opposed to the outside. And he won't be pleased with that. Hey, first. It was never going past it. Well, I know it does go better. No, I know, but we could have been off with a curl more. God, darn it. Should have had a little left face. Yes, his weight was pretty good there, Pat. I mean, it, you're throwing to the outside of the rings and uh, playing in a very confined area. And like you said, he just took yeah. a little bit too much ice. Yeah. Don, it's I was sitting here thinking, is there any way I can borrow these mics when I'm playing against these guys so I know <laughs> what they're talking about? <laughs> I could find out where the ice is funny and... <laughs> and what their intentions are. Right. Whether I've got them rattled or not. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! get it by no oh, no oh that one that rock took off big time on him maybe played it a little bit too tight Harry right, cannot that. believe that I sure went Ooh. I was light maybe I... Harry said was I light You're shaking your head. You don't think well, he was right? Like? We've been seeing that all week long. You, you get over on those sides, and some rocks seem to move what? more than others, and it's it's almost unpredictable. It's a guessing game. Yeah, it's, and some of them, once they start to go, they there's no stopping them. And I, uh, a lot of players were shaking their heads, and it, it was nothing, nothing against the rocks. It's just something, as you get over on the edges, some of them go and some don't. Pat, what do you think of this call? Well, I guess if he gets it just perfect, he can get his four. Whoa! too far but Brad Height comes back with three on end number seven and believe me this game the 1995 Briar final is a long way from over Manitoba leads by one As the thermometer drops, dangerous crystals can form in your car's engine, threatening to shorten its life. That's why today's Quaker State has engineered intelligent oil. Oil that senses the changing threats in your engine and adapts its own molecular structure for continuous protection. Whenever the driving conditions change, so does Quaker State. The intelligent oil for longer engine life. 
personal computers. Everybody wants one or already has one, but how long does it take to get up and running? Too long if you're reading manuals and too expensive if you take classroom courses. Here's the perfect solution. Introducing the number one video teacher for computers. The fast, easy way to learn how to use a computer. You get a detailed introduction to the PC and professional instruction on the most popular programs like Windows 3.1 and Excel. With the number one video teacher, you'll learn the easy way. No fancy words or jargon, and you can learn at your own pace. Call now and get this valuable instructional video for this incredibly low price. But that's not all. We'll also send you a second video. You'll learn MS Word for Windows, QuickBooks, and Word Perfect for Windows, too. Now the computer skills demanded by today's top employers are at your command. So why pay over $75 for other instructional videos? You can learn everything you need to know with the number one video teacher. You get six valuable programs, over four and a half hours of professional instruction for just $24.95. That's two videos for the price of one. Call and get started today with the number one video teacher for computers. Order now. Do you dream in color? In bottomless blues and screaming yellows? In sounds that shake you to the bottom of your heart? In images clear as crystal and brilliant as ice? In faraway worlds as close as your fingertips? These are what dreams and Sony Trinitron televisions are made of. Make one come true for you. It's your life. Isn't it worth a Sony? Think healthier looking, shinier hair like this only happens in the movies? Nah, it can happen every day with Pantene Pro-V. Pantene gets right to the root where healthier looking hair begins. Kirstie's hair wasn't always so glamorous until she found Pantene. Provitamins penetrate into the root, while our conditioning formula improves hair all the way to the tips. Hair this good deserves a close-up. Pantene Pro-V shampoo and conditioner. For hair so healthy looking, it shines. Provitamins. I know they're in there. Three ends remain in this Labatt Briar final, and Saskatchewan has bounced right back with a big three on the seventh end. And Pat Ryan, I think you'll agree that if Saskatchewan does go on to victory, they'll look back on the triple kill by Mark Dacey as the turning point of this game. That was a great shot. It was it was gutsy too because uh, they could have just as easily drawn one in there and still had a great shot at their three ender. But uh, Mark's been making the hits and the hit and rolls all uh, all day, as you've seen, and. Uh, I suspect he's going to continue to do it right all the way through. Pat, we thank you very much for joining us. And that triple kill was somewhat reminiscent of a shot a fellow by the name of P. Ryan made at the World Championships in Lausanne, Switzerland a few years back. Yeah, that was a good one. But, Don, i got to rem remind you also, we lost that game. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to head back to my lucky seat now because the last end wasn't so good sitting up here. <laughs> you may have to go sit with your father, Glenn. He's probably a little nervous right now. All right, thanks, guys. Pat Ryan, a three-time Canadian champion. Twice back-to-back -back winner in 88-89, and last year as third for Rick Folk has been with us during the playing of this seventh end. And now in end number eight, the first stone comes to rest just right of the center line. Well, we've seen some great shots in the semifinals and the finals. That one by Mark Dace will rank as one of the all-time great shots. And of course, Terry Burton's great hit and roll over in the corner was just a super shot. Well, and he's not letting up. He's going right after him again. Fenton has made some great shots coming around center guards in about the last four ends. Well, that sets the trend for the whole end on. If he can get around the center guards, and you'll see there that it's directly in behind the Saskatchewan Rock. And in front of the T line, full four foot, you get four great points for that Is shot. Tight! The role of the lead no, with the good, free guard zone has become Brody. so important. They really have to be able to draw so well yeah. and play a whole range of shots. Are we bumping or not bumping? Yeah, not bumping. Bumpin'. Hard! Real hard! Come on! Oh, you guys, talk to me quicker. You heard Brad Hite saying to his front end, Wayne Chargers and Mark Dacey, talk to me. Let me know where it is. And that's big part of curling communication because if they had said he's back four foot he would have got him to sweep it all the way down they wouldn't have rubbed that guard and been in behind but now it's wide open major shot here for Keith Fenton if he can hit and roll in behind the guard again then they really got something started big weight okay good rock And 
I think uh, Kerry Burtnick would like that rock, Donnie, maybe to hit and roll to the corner for second shot rock. You know, even if it's on the edge of the eight foot, you know, it's in play. Saskatchewan cannot afford to make a mistake because now Manitoba's lying too. If they go around the guard again and don't make it again, Manitoba's got a chance for a big end. Got it passed. Sit down, baby boy. Good shot. Oh, great brushing there by the Saskatchewan. Casey and Ormsby. Boy, did they, they work that hard all the way down there. They made that shot. Charters may have thrown it, but let me tell you, the brushers made the shot. Feel good. I hope this game doesn't go to an extra end because I don't think Brad Height's voice is going to hold up. <laughs> Might not last through the temp. Wayne. A little bit of a defensive solid. move here. Don Manitoba is going to run off that center guard. Okay. Well, the jam was written all over the yellow one at the top of the forefoot, so he really had not, <laughs> no choice. Well, they could have come down, maybe played exactly the same shot they did. It was not quite in behind the guard. Maybe just moved it back forefoot. I think Terry feels... Uh, that Saskatchewan's going to try and steal a point here, so he's going to try and keep the forefoot open and maybe get a chance to get at that one. Saskatchewan doesn't make a good guard. Tight again. Lots of weight. It's all right, dog. I heard Brad Height yell, tight again, tight which means he was very close to being inside the intended line that he wanted. Leave her out as long as it'll stay. Oh, winner, dog. That is... Too, too close. I agree. <laughs> I mean, that rock had to be out in front of the rings. Carry run the first one off. Now they're going to play exactly the same shot, make a good shot, the line two. to the skip when he yells yes no yes no you know they're going oh, yeah. to be close absolutely like whether well, you make contact you heard Kerry Burton yell great shot he knew he had it what do you want to do in turn freeze oh well, I don't know about that Good I think play that I made that shot last time we played here I made I that think you're shot. only one point Perfect. down you got to run them you're paying the freeze you're like freeze oh boy you could concede Typical three guys. here I got to wait I agree with you, John. I like to hit two. Here before. Well, as long as you're hitting in front of that rock, you got something to work with at the end. As a desperation, you may want to tap it back, but here, boy, if you don't make the good freeze, just maybe touch that front one and roll into the open. You got a major problem. But let's assume he makes Whoa. it. Well, even if he makes it, Jerry still got the last rock. He's got two in the rings. He can yes, move him around. And that's another reason I don't like it. I mean, a freeze is the most difficult shot in curling, and let me tell you. Should have hit. Absolutely. Sorry, right. get him. That's right, there's lots of game left. Just forgot to throw it. Yeah, be two and a half there. Now he's forced to play to try and steal a point here and it could blow up right in his face. They could go score three or four. They're looking at three for sure now unless a double in face. To get out of the stands, they're gonna have to make a great shot. Have a lock. Boys, have a lock. This one's got lots of weight. Right off. Right off. You know, but we get a replay right of just delivery there. He looked down right away and it looked to me like he knew he was heavy when he released it. It just slides through. So a reprieve for Saskatchewan. And you're right. As soon as he released it, Glenn cast his eyes toward the ice. You, know, you just watch him here. He lets it go. He's 
comes out, he drives out pretty good, he releases it. And watch just at the end. Watch here. Oh, that's major. What do you want? No, I'm just asking he, what he, he, he knows that he's heavy. And mind you, he just slipped through the rings in a very fast spot, but it really turns this end around for Saskatchewan because now they're hitting. There'll be no freezing now. They got a major break. Portions of the game, the curling changes. And Mark Dacey certainly redeems himself. Oh, that was stupid in your first one, Wyatt. Well, let you talk me into that. I was just thinking, I made that well, shot. Uh, I made that shot. I know, but that's... There. It just felt and looked good. back to one. Now we're chasing again. That's right. Jeff Ryan makes the draw. They're really chasing. Matt the team is drafting oh, right oh, by them. Uh, ah, Jeff wait. Ryan makes that draw. Bottom room. Wait. Oh, he's got a lot of weight again. They deep. haven't laid a brush to this. Deep. What do you want? Him? Deep. It's going to be deep. Is he? Well, not true. possibility in the latter stages okay. of a game Problem, the adrenaline, get, adrenaline there. gets flowing and what? maybe you just get pumped up a little too much well, well, played those three you may have a break in concentration you know he went through the first time and he was playing to the side so now he's down the center he'll say well I'll just take a little bit off it but it may be a little bit faster down the center and it just started gliding yeah. on him well, that's not a nope. bad shot it's behind the guard that's how good we're making for making it good we're just going in a biter is a biter but Brad Height today expressed similar sentiments to what we heard from Kevin Martin yesterday. Don't try and talk me into shots. Oh, yes. That's why I believe there's only one captain of the ship, and it's got to be the guy throwing the last shot. You can say all you want about lead seconds and thirds, but they're not going to tell me what to throw if I, I'm skipping. Room! Watch the room! Done! Ready! Wow! And they're trying to take it deep now because he's well by the guard. Now Real they're... Hard, lay it on her! Lay it up! Sweeping and not sweeping. I hate come into play here. Either go or get off. Because it's so far out in front, you'll see there's That's lots bumper. of room between the guard and the rock Kerry's trying to make contact with. So he can hit a half a rock and roll into the open. And then he's got control of the game again because it looks like he's going to score two. Unless I decides to gamble down and go around that center guard again. Big shot for Kerry. He wants to get some movement. He wants to roll wide open. He doesn't want to sit there. He doesn't want to roll just a foot. Yeah. He wants to roll big time. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stay close. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ah. Stay close. Whoa. only get a half a point for those two. <laughs> well, you know, you talk about fighters. Remember at the half? Canadian more? Junior oh, Championships in Regina? Yeah, good. So that means it'll come in better with a little less. Uh, That's your older. Where we had a situation with Chris Galbraith in the seventh when end. There wasn't the rock in the that. rings when he threw his final stone, and he wound up with three. Time, right with that ice. And that rock was there, and you hit no. it really I center. like this anyway. What did we have last time here? Yeah. Okay, for Brad Hyde, he's going to play exactly the same shot. Now, this is the game right here. 
He wants to make sure that when he's coming by that guard, he's on the inside of the center line because it will finish for him. But the key here, Don, is he wants to bring it back in this area and hopefully right behind that guard. He doesn't want to leave it in the open because Carey just threw the shot. He knows exactly how much movement is that area, nope. so he has to better. bury it. He cannot leave it open. And, of course, the danger here for him is that he give it a little inward motion at Flavel, a curl big time once he gets to that center line and rack on the guard. A very, very gutsy call here. But really the only call he can make, he's got to bury it in there and then hope Burtnick fans, otherwise Burtnick will have a three. Ready! He can come to the back one even. Whoa! Whoa! Right off! Get ready now! Hard! Go! Hard! Now they're Way sweeping. Back. They want to bury it. Come on! Hard now! Hard. Come on! Come on! Come on! Hard, 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 hard! hard. <laughs> well, it's buried, but it's deep. Just strong. That's good news, bad news. They were trying to sweep all the way for weight. Well, we're off that sucker. Yeah, we're off it. Maybe it's better. That diddling around doesn't get it swinging. You heard what he's saying. If he's off that one, now there's the situation. There's lots of room. That high guard is high, and that's a benefit to Burtnick on this shot. It's high enough though that he could miss that rock by a good eight it's inches. For gamble. Hope to come around it. For gamble to try for two or three. Absolutely. Go for the gusto. Or uh, two feet. He just has to move it. Like he says, two feet. The key is line. If two and a half is draw, I could throw about two here. Don't jump on it. I heard Kerry say, don't jump on it, because if he, the sweepers jump on it, Don, they hold that rock that much straighter part of the way down the ice. Well, close. Yeah. Hard. If he makes this, he Hard. could get his three right Whoa. back. Oh, hey. Hard. Hey. He has to get it past the guard. Oh, it's close. Is he behind? Oh, oh, he's behind. He's got to hit it on the corner. Oh, that break. He pushed it straight back onto his own. And the best Burtnick can do on end number eight is a single point. He was hoping for more, but with two ends remaining, Manitoba enjoys a two-point lead. I saw a vision of what this house could be for us. He took it all the way down to the plaster. This is our first house. In the other houses, they're off as much as two inches. These ones are perfectly true. He took everything out. I felt like I own something. I own, own a piece of the earth. CIBC Personal Vision Home Ownership. To see better ways to borrow for home renovation, see your CIBC personal banker or call them. I see our home as, as sort of our nest. At CIBC, <laughs> we're working to see what you see. There are some things you can't put a price on. Fortunately, safety isn't one of them. Tell Amigo for $19.95 a month with no setup fees and no long term commitment. Because if you had to put a price on safety, this is it. Can Tell Amigo. It doesn't take a thief long to steal a car. Police reports show that on average, one car is stolen every 20 seconds. It's time to get serious about crime prevention. It's time for the club. The club is a state of the art tempered steel locking device that's tough to defeat. Once attached to your vehicle, thieves see it and move on, leaving your car or truck right where you parked it. Accept no cheap imitations. Make sure your anti-theft device says the club on the handle. Never park your car without it. Sixty-seven specialty repair centers across Canada. The largest network of automotive professionals and your traditional neighborhood garage, all in one. Auto Pro, the largest network of automotive professionals. Tak se snažím sehnat ten nový operační systém Chicago. Pořád odaluje jeho uvedení na trh. Ten nový OSVR pod IBM se zdá být vynikající. OSV.
ty dvě vár. Zrovna jsem o něm četla v časopise. Máte tam opravdový multitasking? Snadný přístup do internetu. Hrozně ráda bych tu síť vyzkoušel. Oh, to je můj bífr. For some downhill excitement, Lu Kaofang goes for the men's title, while Peekaboo Street prepares to capture the women's crown. The finals are next Saturday. Well, wherever you're looking in this afternoon on the CBC Television Network, we hope you're enjoying the action. Two ends remain. Manitoba leads Saskatchewan by a score of eight to six. They're playing for the Labatt Briar Tankard. The winning squad will receive replicas of the Tankard, plus championship rings, Zodiac watches, and most importantly, a chevron, which they will attach to their curling, attach to their curling uniform when they go on to represent Canada at the World Championships coming up next month from the 8th to the 16th in Brandon, Manitoba. On this ninth end, Gary Burtnick has called on Keith Fenton to fire the lead rock through the house. The only trouble with this, uh, throwing it through, is that uh, it gives the other team an opportunity to put up two corner guards. And I don't think Terry will, uh, Kerry will be too upset to be tied up coming along as long as he has that last rock. I mean, that's the key part. In the free guard zone, it may not be as critical as before, but let me tell you, when you got last rock, you got control. Well, oh, oh, for a little bit more weight on that last shot of uh, Burtnick, he would have uh, hit a half a rock and scored three, but, you know, that was a good percentage shot. At least he got one. He still got control of the game. He's two up, but a little bit more weight, he would have caught a little bit less of that rock and uh, scored three. Exactly. Saskatchewan's got to be breathing a sigh of relief that Manitoba only did get a single. I think we saw that reaction from Brad Height as he made his way back to the opposite end. He was quite happy to get out of the end, giving up oh. just a single point. No question. When his uh, third mark, Daisy pulled up short on a freeze, and then Jeff Ryan let him right off the hook with a draw through the rings. I mean, they dodged a real bullet. Oh, right off, right off. Because if Jeff had got that one in, you know, then they were forced to play the freeze to try right and get out of the end, and who knows what would have happened. This chip shot that uh, Fenton is playing is a very difficult shot because he's not allowed to remove that yellow rock from play. So that will go back because it's in the free guard zone. All he was trying to do was feather it off the to the corner. Now, close. Good? Yeah. Couple. The rock being replaced by Brad Height. And under free guard zone rules, as Colleen said, the first three outside the rings cannot be removed. But you know, see what Brad Height did? He Before he put that rock back, he cleaned it to make sure there was nothing in it. Because that rock was uh, back of the rings there, so he cleaned it, which is a good thing to do. Because if you're going to raise it or go around it, you know, you don't want to make sure there's about seven hairs underneath it. And this only knows what would happen then. up on the other side and you put corner guards up in areas where the rock does a lot of curling now on the intern and the outturn side they both curl or finish really nicely so no matter what side you put it on here you can bury behind them but if there's one straight turn and one curling turn you always put it on the curling turn it's easier to get around so now Manitoba has an opportunity to peel. We talked about the impact of the free guard zone. It came into effect last year. And you'll notice how the number of blank ends has been reduced and the number of stolen ends has increased with the FGZ rules. That's the direct result of the free guard zone. Good thing there's no frost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with frost, that rock would not made it, have made it across the ice. Wednesday would have stopped in the eighth foot. Now, Brad Height will continue to throw up corner guards because what he wants Manitoba to do is waste a lot of rocks throwing at the corner guard. Then maybe with Mark Dacey's first, he'll decide to go around, or maybe with Wayne Charter's last rock, he'll go around. And obviously, he's hoping for a Manitoba nose hit on one of the corners. But the big thing is he wants Manitoba to waste rocks. When they get them in behind, they don't want too many uh, chances for Manitoba to go after them. So 
just two ends remaining. I think we see the tension of this championship game on the faces of all competitors. Terry Burtnick made a comment to Brad Height in the seventh end when all those rocks were in play around the forefoot. He said, we're not a particularly good peeling team. That was the break Saskatchewan was looking for. They've got their double corner guards up. Now they want to sneak around. And as our viewers look at the corner guards, Brad Height's going around the one on the left-hand side, which is a little bit higher, which is a little closer to the hog line, so you can miss that rock by a good foot and still be buried. And not only that, I think Brad Height knows the ice in that area, because that's where he tried to play in the seventh end. Score is three, which he did. heard Brad Height say, God, he was short. He threw his guard harder than he did that one. That one might have made it just into the rings, but he was a little bit quiet. Didn't hurt Saskatchewan that much, even no. though it's not in. And Gary's obviously ignoring all the guards and drawing in the round, which is a... Uh, well, it's a little bit of a gamble, I think. But he's thinking to himself, I can't get all these guards out. If I take the center one off, they're going to go around well, again, so I'm going to have to well, come around. Well, so he's going to beat them well, in this thing. Let it work. He's well, going to hope to get around the guard that's covering well, part of the court. Wait, come on! Hard! Brad might want to take a chapter out of the Kerry Burtnick school of how to win a briar, and that's blank this ninth end. Be two down coming home and score a three in the tenth. That's what happened back in 1981 in the championship game between Kerry Burtnick and Al Hackner of Northern Ontario. Harry Burtnick in 1981 at 22 years of age, the youngest skip to ever win the Briar. break because now Terry Burton hits us when they're lying too. I might have ignored that raise and maybe gone around the corner guard. The danger of that of course is that Manitoba's got that rock on the top of the 12 that they could promote into the four foot. Second stone of this end for Jeff Ryan, the manager of the third. but now lies too. Well, Pat Ryan knows all about pressure in these situations. He twice went through round robin play unbeaten in 1988. He was able to uh, win it all. It's a tough, to the wall, tough situation for Brad yeah. Height because the rocks are all spread across the front of the house. Two in belonging to Manitoba. Brad's trying to hit and roll in behind the corner guard belonging to his own team. And that's a difficult. There's not much room for error. Right off. I mean, he just has to skinny the, the guard that he's trying to go around and get the inside roll. Yes, hard. Oh. Right off. Yep, yep. Oh, right off. Oh, beautiful shot. That's a great roll. You're a fighter, you just threw. What's that? Just threw something. That made the difference, yeah. Well, Terry Burton is going to play the double, trying to run these two back. The other alternate shot he has may be coming down here and pushing his own into this area and maybe getting a little bit of roll in of his shooter over here in this area to lie, too. But it's a little bit of a gamble, so I think he's playing the conservative shot, running the two back. The ladder shot you talked about, that's rather dangerous in that you could almost, if you miss it, concede the two in the Yes, end. no question about it, but that's why it's a bit of a gamble. But, you know, you're two up. If you're three up, that's a big lead coming home. And this is a tough run back for him. 
Pushed it back, but jammed it on the stone in the rings. I crashed here in the first end, or uh, that other end, when we yeah. said we had perfect ice, remember? We had. We had about that, I think we had, didn't we? We were closer to the a little bit. I was guessing, I was guessing, I would say, as but I'd say here. Just yeah. inside. Back eight for weight. Because it runs down the line a little more. Yeah, we want to be here. Back here for just a well, not even. You know, actually, just T-line's not bad because we don't have to hit much of that. Yeah, but if you do hit it a bit full, then we you got to need... come into the open with the other one. Yeah, but if you do hit it a bit full, then it's pretty easy double if you only have T-line. I'd like to, to come out on the other side of the red one, on that side, just a hair, eh? Okay. Brad Height says he wants to come down here, hit this, just skinny this one over to no, this no. area here. But more importantly, lose the shooter into that it. area there. Back back. Even if he moves that out just a little bit on the upturn side, I don't think Terry can go for it because it falls all the way there. But he's just trying to touch that front one. Crash. Move it over what slightly. I have? Roll the shooter. That looks like a line. lot. I just think this is going to run too straight. Oh, I had it on the wrong side of the center. Little left. Little indecision Little there for well, Brad Height as to where the broom is being placed. Back eight. He's very nervous about the, the broom because he's outside the center line. And it could run very, very straight for him. If he takes any less, it's going to curl big time for him. Whoa! 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 It's got to curl! Mm. The big disadvantage of right not off. playing on the Saturday. Yep! That if Whoa. the ice has changed, yep. you don't know. Hard. Look at oh, he's Whoa. got a great looking shot here, but just curls another inch. No. Daddy. His weight is perfect. Gee, take less ice, I said. Less ice and it was perfect. Well, there's nothing wrong with that, Brad. This weight's good. Ah. Yeah. How did we get it? Oh, ice. I don't think we had that there. I couldn't see how we were getting ready to sweep. No, we were within an inch, so yeah. if we stay off it, it might be all right. They're still hollering for weight. They haven't got it figured out. Yeah. Yeah. Now, for Kerry Burtnick here, he'd like to hit this Saskatchewan Rock just bite, uh, just in the 12-foot the dawn, and just roll over in front so that he cuts off that whole four-foot area yeah. whoa, and whoa. force Brad Height a wide out turn drop for his two. Whoa, 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 whoa. Nice shot. Whoa, whoa, baby. Whoa, baby. Well, Brad Height has an opportunity with the final stone of this ninth end to get a deuce and... Send this game to the 10th all even, and it's a very nervous moment for the wives of the participating curlers. We're looking at Patty Burtnick, and all she can do now is watch and hope. Hey, guys. Set her on. Meantime, the Saskatchewan fans are about ready to wave the flag in anticipation of a steal, maybe, on the 10th end for Brad Height to win it. Well, that's the beauty of the free guard zone. You score two here, you tie it up. Put the first one right on the center line, halfway between the rocks, the rings, and the hog line. And you've nice. got something yeah, starting because they yep. can't touch it. No, line's good. Clean. Clean on it. Line's good. Clean. You hear him well, saying that word again? Clean, clean, which means he's clean close. On it. Yep, can't hurt it. Easy. Oh, wow. Well, off, off. Clean. Hi, boy, Bradley. Now it's Bradley. <laughs> Right to the tee line on the edge of the forefoot. And on end nine, Brad Height of Saskatchewan, who at one point trailed by four, is all even oh, with yeah, Harry Burton yeah, yeah. heading home. Many traits combine to make a good curler. Creativity, innovation, and dedication. I'm Russ Howard, and throughout this series, I'd like to share with you a few of the tips that have helped make me successful. The beauty of the flat foot slide delivery is you're 36 feet closer to your target, assuming you can slide straight. Take your time, look around, find yourself a pair of shoes that'll do the job. You have to be able to slide dead straight all the time. 
The flat foot slide delivery is crucial for proper balance. It really seems simple, but give this drill a try. 90% of the curlers have a heck of a time sliding straight down this center line. Many of the greatest curlers in the world have used a tuck delivery for years. The tuck delivery is very, very tough on the knee. In my books, I'd like to see a slide with a flat foot slide delivery, which creates tremendous balance. For four hot shots, I'm Russ Howard. There are a lot of reasons we created Ford Windstar with more passenger and cargo room than any leading minivan. A lot of reasons we gave Windstar the widest stance for secure handling, and reasons we gave it over 40 standard safety features, and even went so far as to include 24-hour roadside assistance. But we'd be glad to name all the reasons, but you've already named them. Ford Windstar, created for the most important people in the world. Now, from the Purex pillow people at Scott Paper, new noticeably softer Purex bathroom tissue. You will see and feel the difference in every two-ply sheet. It's so much softer, so much smoother. Pillowy soft, regular. And jumbo Purex, now noticeably softer. Introducing the Dremel Moto Tool. You cut, we cut. You sharpen, we sharpen. You polish, we polish. You drill, we drill. You clean, we clean. You sand, we sand. You grind, we grind. You hammer. Did I mention we cut? The Dremel Moto Tool. With more than 150 available accessories, why settle for some two-bit power tool? Down to the final end of this 1995 championship game. Deadlocked at eight. The Labatt Prior Tankard will go to the side that can steal or score a point. Time may be a factor for Saskatchewan on this final end. They only have 744 remaining. And on an end where you're trying to steal, play sometimes tends to be slower. Well, for Saskatchewan, they at least have one time out left. It'll take about seven and a half minutes to play an end. They've got seven minutes and 44 seconds. So as long as they don't dilly-dally, I think they'll have lots of time. And really, when you're stealing, strategy is fairly simple in the tenth. Get yes. it out front and try to bury one in around. And we saw them during the commercial break, all at center ice, the four of them almost huddling about their strategy and where the broom would have to be and what ice they would have to take for all the shots. It starts with this shot by... Dan Arsby, they do not want it in the rings. They want it short, and he put it in an absolutely perfect spot. You want it short, and you want, but you want it tight. You don't want to yep. leave it long for Manitoba to come around. And Kerry's going to try that treacherous chip shot. He's asking Keith Fenton just Whoa. to. Uh, touch that stone and Whoa, nudge it over. And that's Whoa, about all he can do is Whoa. touch the stone. Right off. Oh, so close. All right, good try. Great try, Keith. Remember, under the free guard zone rules, that stone out in front cannot be taken out of play, but they can move it. And that's what Keith Fenton was attempting to do. And he's very disappointed by not making it, yet it's such a difficult shot to make. We, we rarely see it made. Good. Now for Saskatchewan, they're going to use a long guard yeah, to right. cover up a short guard. Now, the theory behind this is that they want to make sure Manitoba wastes all the rocks running at the long one. Then, when it comes down to the third last rock, or the skip first rock, they'll go, go around the short guard. And that's two perfect shots by Dan Ormsby. Manitoba, of course, in this situation would dearly love to run them both. But even if they run them both the way they're lined yeah. up, the Manitoba shooter would stay in place. Easy. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Clean, clean, clean. That boy. Well, good news for Kerry Burton because he doesn't have to score a three this time to win the Briar like he did 14 years ago here in Halifax. Bad news is he might have to make a... Fabulous come around to the button. 
Well, I'm sure there were many people who thought it was all but over when Burtnick stole two on the second on the sixth end to take a lead of seven to three. But on the seventh, uh, big triple kill by Mark Dacey and able to catch him to come back with three. Well, they both scored now until the five to one on the last three ends, and that's awesome. Really got to go to him. You were tight too. Oh, 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 right off, right off, right off, right off. Fair in. Good. Just once again. Kerry will try to hit that one that's closest to the center line because if it comes down to the last shot for Saskatchewan, they'll draw around that long one, Don. It'll be at least Not over on the secure. corner of the forefoot and open the whole path to the forefoot for Kerry's last rock. And that's why he's hitting the one in the center, as opposed to maybe running yep. both. Three. Right up. Come on. Right up. Better boy. And Rob Macon removes the Saskatchewan stone closest to the range. The shooter also rolls out of play. That was the problem with Wayne's first shot because it pulled so much over. And it's such a long guard, too. Well, that's why Kerry ran off that one close to the rings. It's such a long guard. Even if Saskatchewan buries in there, Stay out of here. Manitoba can follow him in. And for Saskatchewan, for the lead, the second, and the third, they want no rocks in the rings. They want it to leave. They want to leave it up right to their skip. Put it in the rings, ah. hopefully in the four-foot area. They're yelling, whoa, 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 whoa. Yep. Hard finisher, come on! Good. Now they want good, to get good. Okay. Now, by putting that rock in the rings... That's all right. We'll play with that one. Throw the Manitoba's yeah. forced now to play the long guard, because that really basically is the danger rock. Long guard. Yeah. Hey! Hard, hard, real hard. That a boy. Okay. That's it. He cleared the front. That's the big thing. Now at least Kerry, when they play this whole end like this, Kerry may have just a wide open hit with that one in the rings. Or if Saskatchewan bumps that one back, you'll still have either a double kill, a run back, or a straight draw in the house in the four-foot area. The big thing for Terry's team remove all the guards. Room. Those are the danger shots in this end. The reaction of Mark Dacey would Better die. indicate that he's going to say he might be a little heavy. Wow. Better day. This is what you call a sweeper's Plane. delight. Finish it. Yep, blow. That's good. Good. Oh boy, nice shot. It's an anxious time for the Saskatchewan fans in attendance, for the Manitoba fans, and I'm sure for yeah, hurt, hurt. supporters of both sides are, who are looking hurry, in on television this afternoon. Hurry! 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 Three! Okay, that's all right. That's not great. It's not bad. At least off the center line, but now it allows Saskatchewan a chance to maybe bump their yellow one back. Push it now or no? Want to push it now or no? I don't think so. I like the guard up there again. Absolutely. Okay. Make the other team waste as many rocks as they can running off those front ones. Then with your, like I said, the last one, or the first one by the skip, move that one back. Then they only got two shots at it. Well, there was some earlier discussion on, about what on. shots to play, but I think the other three go. members are now leaving all the decisions in the hands on. of Brad Ike. Come on! Oh, they got to go big time with this. Brad Heights out there. He's halfway down the sheet trying to get a hot line is not in sight. There it is. It's going to get over. They want to make sure they don't put it in a position for a double kill for Jeff Ryan. Well, they did, but they had to get it over. Yeah, he's probably going to fail too. Just want to jam into it? No, I know. But... This may be the pivotal shot of this end. <laughs> That's always the worry with going with double guards, is that if you don't put it in the exact right position, you're leaving your opponent whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't worry, the other one. Well, 
Jeff Ryan was able to get rid of the stone just delivered by Daisy. Turn around to double. Well, if he gets if he gets the nose tap, Brad. He's right to there. That would just roll inside an inch. Just across the face an inch. And there's where you throw that card. There's some decent movement there. Yeah. We're down to skip stones in this championship game. If I was Mark Stacey, I would bring this rock you right in here now? and bury it right in that area there. And then if Terry hits it and stays there, then he just freezes to it. You like but leave just a now? part of it open. He might, eh? I don't like the tap back yet. I would just play the complete draw right around it. I would ignore that front one. Make it good. Then if Burtnick ever rubs the front one, then you put the guard right on top of it. I just play a cold Maybe draw here. Last mark. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. We gotta be on the nose. It looks too much yet to me. Concerned about the ice again. He's never sounding totally confident about where to put the broom. Yeah, we've heard Brad ask for the broom to be adjusted. Whoa! Go around. Maybe four or five times in this match. Yelling, go around it, and that's the shot I would have called. Oh, he's got big way here. This is going to grind and time. They've dropped right off it. That's his first shot. Oh, this, this is not a good shot at all. I mean, not only does he ruin the whole end, but Burtnick hits that one in front, spills it. Where does he hide? When you said T-line. You've been heavy up, having him judge the right all game. good throw by Brad Hike. He's a little upset for the sweepers now because he felt they swept it too far down the ice, got it started, and it just glided from then on. But he's got to put that rock in the forefoot. Can't be in the back of the 12 because now Burtnick hits this one. Where does he draw it? He can draw around the corner guard and just catch a piece of the eight foot. And he leaves the whole house open for yeah. Kerry Burtnick with his last draw. But first of all, Kerry Burtnick has to remove that Saskatchewan stone sitting at the top of the slot. And Kerry doesn't want to hit and roll to the center onto the center line because Brad Hyde will simply draw around it. He'll ignore that rock. So he wants to get a big roll out of this. Boy, quite a hush has fallen over the Metro Center as Kerry Burtnick oh, oh, oh. delivers his first stone. Hey, whoa, 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 yeah. Hey! Whoa, whoa! Yes, yeah! Hurry! Whoa, 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 whoa! Hurry, hurry, I'm going a bit. Whoa. Manitoba has the shot rock. Well, the bad news for Manitoba is he's le left height exactly the same shot that he threw the first time. And in curling, you try to avoid that as much as possible. Look at the hack. This way it blocks his draw. Huh? What's that? Blocks his... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Trouble is, you can still Dan, down, huh? you're, you had one move when you were full on that guard. It come back. That's what I'm just going by. He didn't throw it that good, and it's still curled. Take our time out to make sure you only got a minute left. Time out. Time out. I think that's a wise call. Absolutely. You okay. sure? Well, this is the washer right here. That's usually where the... That's usually been the deciding factory. They're just concerned about ice. They're not so so much concerned against ice. He, he has to bury it. And it was here. Oh, yeah, I didn't. Like, like and we had room here, and you threw it. You come in out, and it still got back to the center line. So I'm thinking mine should be good here. And I was there and heavy, and I was full on that. But that's too much. That's too little. I think it's got to be this. Okay. That's the only spot we got okay. a chance. It's within an inch, anyways. So. You see, he's uh, just a bit of a guessing. He says, here, I think it's not enough. He doesn't want to pull on the guard, obviously. Here should do it, he said. we got to hope that it breaks at the end. And you can see how much ice he has. He's only got uh, two feet to get around that rock. But the big thing is, if he gets it half buried, put a decision in the other skip's mind. Do I tap it back or I just try to pick it out of there? Yeah. Big shot. Don't you love the drama? Two great warriors going at each other. Just a great game for him today. Final.
final moments of the 95 Briar unfolding here at the Metro Center. Is going to be by the guard. He's tight to the guard. He's all over it. Oh, he just aired it. He came within a fraction of slipping in behind the guard. And now Terry Burtnick has a wide open hit to claim his second Briar title. Yeah. And they said when they put the broom down, it's within an inch, and that's exactly what it was. Within an inch of making a perfect shot. He slipped to the back of the forefoot. If he doesn't touch the guard, Don, he might have been back a foot, leaving a wide open draw for Kerry. But this is a wide open hit. It looks fairly simple, <laughs> as we said many, many times. But you know, nothing particularly difficult about the shot. It's wide open, but it's the circumstances. The Canadian Championship, your second Canadian Championship. But the big thing for Kerry Burtnick is that he does not have to save a shooter on this stone. He's got the winning point. Sitting up hey guys, the there is the a jam there, so let's be careful, eh? You heard him say there is a jam. If he hits it high on the outside, he could jam it over there, so just he said just, close, be, okay? just listen close. That's exactly right. Look for hand signals if you need to. Hit it on the inside, there's no problem. Here it is. A year of practicing. So will Kerry Burtnick become the fourth team? Two-time Canadian Clean. champion. He's got it. He's right on the money. He's there. And Halifax revisited for Kerry Burtnick his second Canadian championship with a 10-8 win over Brad Height of Saskatchewan. Oh, what a shot. It's just wonderful for Kerry. And it's a sweep of all the major curling titles for Manitoba. Kerry Burtnick, the 1981 champion, wins it again 14 years later and will represent Canada at the World Championships in his home province of Manitoba. Personal computers. Everybody wants one or already has one, but how long does it take to get up and running? Too long if you're reading manuals and too expensive if you take classroom courses. Here's the perfect solution. Introducing the number one video teacher for computers. The fast, easy way to learn how to use a computer. You get a detailed introduction to the PC and professional instruction on the most popular programs like Windows 3.1 and Excel. With the number one video teacher, you'll learn the easy way. No fancy words or jargon, and you can learn at your own pace. Call now and get this valuable instructional video for this incredible low price. But that's not all. We'll also send you a second video. You'll learn MS Word for Windows, QuickBooks, and Word Perfect for Windows, too. Now the computer skills demanded by today's top employers are at your command. So why pay over $75 for other instructional videos? You can learn everything you need to know with the number one video teacher. You get six valuable programs, over four and a half hours of professional instruction for just $24.95. That's two videos for the price of one. Call and get started today with the number one video teacher for computers. Order now. Hey, you want to see some dinosaurs? Yeah, dinosaurs. Let's get them in here. Loading CD-ROM into Windows. What are dinosaurs, Dad? I'm not sure. DOS command dot... Can we see them now? Not yet. Fig dot sys. Configure jumpers and dip switches. Dad, what's a dip? I don't know. Where are you going, kiddo? To the Crandles. Was it the Crandles? They have a Mac. By 23 a.m. and Benny's getting his regular early morning long distance discount to Montreal. But look how much more he'd save with Unitel over the big guys. Later, during peak hours, Chantel would save more with Unitel on calls to mom in Miami. Why? Well, because Unitel always saves you 25% off the big guys regular long distance rates to anywhere in North America. Round the clock every day of the week. That means 25% savings on top of those regular time of day discounts you wait up for every night and every weekend. So, Raj would save more on his calls from London, Ontario to Vancouver anytime. Lucille would save more to Butte, Montana. Where is Montana anyway? Ah, there it is. Located, you'll note, in North America, where Unitel Long Distance always saves you 25% off the big guys' regular rates and off those time-of-day discounts. So why pay more? Call 1-800-575-3000 and join those savvy consumers who joined Unitel to get quality long distance for less. 
10-8 Manitoba win in this Labatt Briar final to make it a Manitoba sweep as Skip Perry Burtnick celebrates with his wife Patty and Carrie joins me now. We really didn't think it was going to come down to the 10th end, Carrie, when you had the four-point lead early. What went through your head when you went down to make the last rock? Well, uh, I mean, when we had the four-point lead, there was still a long way to go. And with the free guard zone, you know it's never over until you get down to the, to the end. And the fifth end break, we said, I think it's going to be a last rock game, and it was. And uh, I was really happy there was an open hit instead of a draw to the button because Brad, uh, Brad just about had one buried there. But uh, it was nice for us. You must love Halifax. What is it, the seafood or something? Your second Briar title in the same city and the same building. I don't know what it is, but I hope they don't wait 14 years to come back here again. <laughs> what is the 14-year wait? What was it like compared to your 81 win? Is it as sweet or is there something about the first one that's always special? I don't know. I, I, you know, in 81, I think that's something that'll be always extremely special because I was 22 years old and, I mean, I almost didn't know what I was getting into and... I mean, this year, it's, it's just so great. Uh, you know, halfway through the year, we were struggling, and uh, you know, we had a little doubt in ourselves, and we did some soul-searching, and uh, obviously it's worked. And here you are, ready to go to Brandon, Manitoba, for the Ford World Curling Championships. Kerry Burtnick, congratulations. And we'll be back to uh, watch Kerry receive the Labatt Tankard next on CBC. Manitoba winning the Labatt Briar with a 10-8 victory over Saskatchewan. We'll be back after this. Last time I was at the dentist, things were not going well. But doctor, I asked, I've been using baking soda, why didn't it help? Maggie said it's not enough. It's got to be in the cavity-fighting toothpaste. There's a baking soda toothpaste from Crest. We've added baking soda's fresh feeling of clean to the cavity-fighting power of Crest. So I brushed with Crest baking soda, and my next checkup was terrific. Baking soda Crest. Feel the clean. Fight the cavities. Some things you can't put a price on. Fortunately, safety isn't one of them. Hi, roadside assistance. Can tell Amigo for $19.95 a month with no setup fees and no long-term commitment. Because if you had to put a price on safety, this is it. Can tell Amigo. As the thermometer drops, dangerous crystals can form in your car's engine, threatening to shorten its life. That's why today's Quaker State has engineered intelligent oil. Oil that senses the changing threats in your engine and adapts its own molecular structure for continuous protection. Whenever the driving conditions change, so does Quaker State. The intelligent oil for longer engine life. It doesn't take a thief long to steal a car. Police reports show that on average, one car is stolen every 20 seconds. It's time to get serious about crime prevention. It's time for the club. The club is a state-of-the-art tempered steel locking device that's tough to defeat. Once attached to your vehicle, thieves see it and move on, leaving your car or truck right where you parked it. Except no cheap imitations. Make sure your anti-theft device says the club on the handle. Never park your car without it. Rust, what it can do to the outside of your car. Weak, neglected antifreeze can do to the inside. You need the tough anti-corrosion formula of Prestone. Use fresh Prestone every year to give your radiator and cooling system heavy-duty rust and corrosion protection. No matter what happens to the outside, Prestone protects the inside. Prestone stops the rust that stops your car. Look for Prestone Defroster to help remove frost from car windshields, wipers, and mirrors. Welcome back to CBC, our Labatt Briar coverage continuing. This is Brad Height, Skip of Saskatchewan, calling his final rock of the 10th end and his reaction as it just rubs on that rock in the 12-foot Brad. You were hesitant putting the broom down, wondering where exactly does it have to go, and you said it was within an inch, and you were right. Yeah, it, uh, you know, it had been tricky out in that spot all week to try and get around, and... Uh, Today it was curling a little bit more than we had uh, all week, so it was uh, just kind of hesitant, really, to be real confident where we put that last shot. When you fell behind by four, it looked like the game might be over early. You fought back so valiantly to make it into the tenth, and what went through your head when you went down to throw that final rock? Oh, just 
I don't know. There was nothing up there. I just wanted to. You want to put it on the on the uh, on the can around there and and hopefully you know see what Kerry can do with it. Brad Hyde, still a fabulous week for you. Thank you very much. It was a terrific game. Brad Hyde, skip of Saskatchewan from Kerr Roberts, Saskatchewan, losing 10-8 to Manitoba today. Manitoba, the Tanker Kings here in Halifax. We'll be back with closing ceremonies after this. We changed the way you saw the world. Now we've made a world of changes. Introducing the new Ford Explorer. The only leading sport utility with standard dual airbags. The only one with control track, which provides four-wheel drive traction automatically. Plus an engine that lets you go 160,000 kilometers before your first scheduled tune-up. The new Ford Explorer. Far and away the best the world has to offer. He might sell some his car. Solid, not fragile. <laughs> this is James Carr. Nothing fancy, nothing parallel or anything. Just park. All I can see is highways swerving up and down and just wait for them to happen to notice. Oh, is that Jane driving by in that beautiful new car? And then just drive away. CIBC Personal Vision Banking and Car Ownership. To see how to get the credit you've earned, see your CIBC personal banker or call us. And I can see where I'm going. I see where I want to be. At CIBC, we're working to see what you see. Paper towels that soak through and let go. Now there's Scott Towels Ultra, the extraordinary new paper towel with holding power. New Scott Towels Ultra, the ultra absorbent, ultra thick paper towel. Forget rubbing and polishing silver, brass, and copper. Clean quickly and safely with the amazing product used by museums worldwide. Their secret is the patented quick silver cleaning plate. In hot water, simply dissolve washing soda. No, it's not ready yet, but watch this. Insert the Quicksilver electrolytic plate. Touch any tarnished item to it, and in seconds, it's sparkling. Clean many objects together with no smell or tainting. Pieces are instantly table ready. Quicksilver also cleans quality brass and copper, and especially gold, fine jewelry, even precious stones. Look how Quicksilver cleans intricate patterns that trap other cleaners. Simply revolve large items. Where water flows, it cleans. Quicksilver is environmentally safe and lasts for years. No mess, no fuss. The astonishing Quicksilver cleaning plate. Only $19.95 and $4 postage. Call 1-800-427-1151. That's 1-800-427-1151 to order now. Welcome back to CBC's coverage of the Labatt Briar, Jeff Ryan and Pat Ryan hugging each other in celebration. Pat Ryan, of course, has his name engraved on the tankard three times. It's the first time for his younger brother, Jeff. And here's the presentation of the Labatt Briar tankard. Manitoba winning it again, completing it a sweep of all the major championships. We're back to wrap up after this. So I'm channel surfing. When it occurs to me, I wouldn't mind hitting one of those fashion TV shows in Paris. You know, I'd find out what's in, find out what's out. That'd be cool. And who knows, maybe someone over there would appreciate the enduring qualities of a true Canadian lager. Hey, trendy colors come and go. Blue never goes out of style. 5.23 a.m. and Benny's getting his regular early morning long distance discount to Montreal. But look how much more he'd save with Unicel over the big guys. Later, during peak hours, Chantel would save more with Unicel on calls to mom in Miami. Why? Well, because Unicel always saves you 25% off the big guys' regular long distance rates to anywhere in North America. Round the clock, every day of the week. That means 25% savings on top of those regular time of day discounts you wait up for every night and every weekend. So, Raj would save more on his calls from London, Ontario to Vancouver anytime. Lucille would save more to Butte, Montana. Where is Montana anyway? Ah, there it is. Located, you'll note, in North America, where Unitel Long Distance always saves you 25% off the big guy's regular rates and off those time of day discounts. So why pay more? Call 1-800-575-3000. 
and join those savvy consumers who joined Unitel to get quality long distance for less. Three brutal killings in the United States. She said that your brother and his family have been murdered. A son and his friend crossed the border to Canada. Everyone's telling me that they've been named as prime suspects. But the case may never be closed. The Fifth Estate, Tuesday. Tuesday, an investor's nightmare. He was making promises that I'd probably double my money on it. A high-pressure sales game. No one ever made any money buying the penny stock from a penny stock broker. Marketplace investigates Tuesday at 7.30. Bat Briar on CBC. Brought to you by LeBat. Good things brewing. CIBC Insurance. Ford of Canada. And by Unitel. Quality long distance for less. Manitoba rink on the podium now getting ready to receive their gold medals and also their rings and watches with their final thoughts in the game we go upstairs to Don Whitman and Don Dugan. Well Kerry Burtnick and company have duplicated the performance of first of all Kelly McKenzie and Chris Galbraith in Regina and then Connie Laliberti in Calgary a sweep of all four major titles for Manitoba curlers in 1995. Well it's been a great year for Manitoba and then just four great teams they curled well but I think I had to feel a little bit sorry for Brad Height today, Don. He curled very well. He was down four points. He could have quit. He never did. He came back. And a great shot by Kerry Burtnick at the end. Well, unlike yesterday, where Burtnick disposed of Kevin Martin in seven ends, it went right to the final stone today for Kerry Burtnick to claim his second Canadian championship. The 14th rink. Don Dugan did it. We saw Pat Ryan up in the broadcast booth. He's done it. The 14th rink to be a two-time Briar winner for Burtnick. Both occurred here in Halifax. Colleen? It was a thrilling final game. Want to tell you about a couple of other things that are coming up here on CBC tonight that you can look forward to. Our coverage of the uh, World Figure Skating Championships from Birmingham, England. The Parade of Champions. It'll be a fabulous show. Elvis Stoiko, of course, will be performing. And, of course, the next time we're going to be seeing you for our uh, curling broadcast will be the Ford World Curling Championship from Brandon, Manitoba, Saturday, April 15th. And, of course, we look forward to seeing you there. And the Manitoba rinks aren't going to have very far to travel. Terry Burtnick and Connie Laliberti will simply have to travel a little bit from Winnipeg to Brandon for those world championships. I'm Colleen Jones for Don Whitman and Don Dugan and all our staff here at uh, CBC. Thanks for joining us today.